to the seafloor and less food means you know you can't grow nearly as large as fast. Oh, here's a nice bamboo. Wow. It's an I-4 clade. I've been looking forward to seeing one of these. I love them. Wow. I think they're really great. Take a... A what? Fort clade? I, I, yeah, I-4 is the, the clade. Yeah, it looks like a candelabra. Candelabra, yeah. <laughs> That's the one I was looking for. <laughs> Steve says it might be the first one of the cruise. Yeah, no, I think it is. It's so pretty. It is. They're really great. They're so distinctive too, um, with the way that they branch. So they branch nodally in this very lyrate candelabra pattern. Super distinctive. Getting some nice uh, still camera shots. And it looks so different from the other bamboo corals. It does. It does look different. Looks like a heart. Or a menorah. Or yeah. A menorah. <laughs> Get a Aww. zoom, Dave, from here. That's really pretty. Oh, that's kind of interesting. You see where there's that tiny branch that's coming off uh, one of the main uh, long branches? It's branching internodally, but generally it always branches at the nodes. Interesting. And the other one, side branch further up, that's branching at, at the node. So oh. that might be, you know, an example of where it might have gotten a little bit of damage and then it started growing. Who knows? Steve is, Steve's commenting that the smaller branches might be branching in a different plane. It's uh, something we've seen before, but still unusual, strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't always do the side branching. Like typically, um, you don't see side branches. You just have the, these main branches that line up perfectly. Beautiful. Megan, can you remind us what exactly is a node? So bamboo corals get their name because okay. they have uh, this Come very on, interesting skeletal structure of having calcium carbonate uh, internodes and protonaceous nodes. So that makes them kind of like your fingers where you have the bone and then you have the cartilage. And that allows the bamboo coral to flex in the current, making it able to withstand really heavy current areas and not break. And so we call those sort of protonaceous cartilage areas nodes and the bones are the internodes. So those calcareous um, structures that are part of the skeleton. It was a nice find. Yeah. I didn't know if we were going to see one. Like, it's like the perfect area for one of those. So I was expecting to see them. There's another Chrysogorgia on the rock. Saw a sea pen in the sediment. We're looking for another one of those rock pens, if we can find one. Purple sea cucumber. Purple. Yeah. Cucumber. Steve says some I-4 can grow to be bigger than Hercules. On his first oh. Nautilus cruise on the Cayman Rise, we saw one that was that size. I, I remember that, seeing that one. It was an amazing shot. Uh, <clears throat> I think we got a Argus image, you know, screen grab with Hercules oh, and the... Can we zoom that pup coral on the rock there? Right below. Oh, yeah. And the coral in the view. It was nice. Wow. 
That was my first cruise too. So now we're getting a close look at this cup coral. Maybe Steve will let us know if we should collect it. He's typing. <laughs> this looks a little bit different than some of the other ones we've seen. It has very long tentacles and like you can see the septa, those um, plate-like structures that make up the skeleton. Cup corals are a single polyp Clarectinian, so a hard coral. They make their skeleton out of calcite, just Zoolative. like shallow water corals that you might be familiar with. Oh, wow. That's a great shot. Yeah. Steve says he believes it's Chavania, which we already have. Okay. Chavania. So we'll pass on this one. Good. Nice zoom. Yeah. Yeah, you can really see those tentacles. Oh, we even have more. Wow. You can see the texture of the tentacles. That's great. <laughs> okay. All right. Bridge now. Can we make a 20 meter move, zero, 070? Zero. Went dark on you. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Just trying to, to get the exposure right. Uh, and when it gets to a certain point, the lens just closes. So oh, I'm done. Closes. And uh, lens control on this goes in steps rather than being proportional. You'll get your camera back soon, Dave. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but we might have to put it on Herc. Uh, Unless you're going to go chase those drops. Yeah, we're going to chase the drops. All right. <laughs> I count four. Yeah. Yeah. Is the rebuilt Zeus coming into port? Uh, I haven't heard an update, but, but the problem is they, they have to make the glass domes for uh, the camera. Yeah, Whoa. that's a manufacturing process right yeah. there. So right here we have a um, senelected sea cucumber. It looks like a Chrysogorgia coral with its squat lobster in the branches. Lalani, could you get the Argus uh, screen grab of the Argus shot? Sure. Thanks. Looking at those ripples. Oh. Yep. Yeah, another good example. I think uh, at least a blog post coming up on this uh, at some, maybe after the cruise. On current ripples? Cool. Yeah. yeah. We've seen yeah. them in the, the Voyager seamounts. I'm going to zoom Argus in a little Make bit. Make note of that right now. <laughs> that gives you a little bit better angle on it, right? About there. How does operating the Zeus camera differ from operating a handheld camera with manual settings? Huh. Uh, there's a lot of uh, similarities uh, in that I'm doing all manual settings. Uh, I'm constantly controlling the exposure or opening and closing the iris in the lens. Uh, because as we get closer to objects, uh, there's more light 
uh, concentrated on them from the lights on the on the front of the vehicle. As we pull back, there's less light concentrated on, so I'm constantly writing the iris open and closed. It's uh, continuously variable. Uh, doesn't go in stops. Uh, and then uh, when I zoom, uh, then I'm constantly writing the focus. Uh, so that's also uh, infinitely variable. And uh, we'll zoom into into things. And right now I'm wide and in pretty much in infinity focus. But as I zoom in, then I have to adjust the focus. So I've got three things going on at once uh, when we do one of those zooms. Uh, and I've only got two hands. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit of a dance. Uh, I have the uh, iris control, uh, my left hand. Uh, on my right hand, I have my thumb on the zoom control and my uh, ring finger on the focus control. And uh, I do all three of those things at once. So from a photographic uh, or photography standpoint, uh, it works like any other lens. Uh, in that you've got uh, iris, uh, sometimes zoom. In this case, there's there's zoom, uh, and then uh, and then uh, uh, focus as well. So all manual. Very impressive. And we also have some comments coming in about um, people who are excited to see that a lot of our interns go on to then become yeah, navigators and pilots and eventually even sometimes watch leads and uh, <laughs> expedition leaders. I think that's something really great about OET. Got a good training pipeline. Yeah, not just here. The people that are out here get jobs at other oceanographic you know, institutions. And Can you zoom, Dave, here? Yep, it's a tiny sea pen. <laughs> Looks like Panatula. Um, while we're here, can I reset your DVL? Go for it. Okay. Okay, let's go. Pick up. That rock looks really funny. <laughs> Which one? The right. one that's coming in the center. Has, there's like a little hole. It's a little polka. <laughs> oh, there. Yeah, it looks silly. I don't know. <laughs> Shadows. That one looks like roast chicken or a turkey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I see it. I definitely yeah. see that. <laughs> <laughs> It's like looking at clouds and <laughs> <laughs> making images. Mm, it really Turkey. is. All the rocks have faces. <laughs> so I keep the tricking myself to thinking <laughs> I see things, and it's just colorations in the rocks or the sediment. We uh, had Thanksgiving at sea on the NA-134, and uh, I got to carve up a turkey about that size. <laughs> Gally, did. <laughs> Gally did a great job. A little sea cucumber. Yep. <coughs> Someone would like to know what the most common types of corals that we see down here are. 
Um, the most, uh, well, okay, we've got a couple groups. Um, we got the bamboo corals. We've seen a number of those, lots of different types. We see the chrysogorgid corals. Uh, those are the golden coral. And we see primnoic corals. So those are like the three big ones that we'll see quite often at this depth. And then you also see some uh, uh, mushroom corals, like the anthemasses we're looking at. So those are in the soft corals. And um, in terms of hard corals, we'll see small cup corals like the one we saw just a few minutes ago. So, but sea cucumber. Yes, no, we, we see lots of sea cucumbers, apparently. <laughs> these are very cucumbery dives. What's been the rarest thing we found during this dive? Coming up. Mm. Yep. Maybe the, right. that acorn worm. We don't see those very often, oh. especially not um, in rocky areas. Ooh. Usually you see them on sediment plains. The, you know, the contours are getting further apart. I thought we'd be hitting sediment, but this is yeah. a lot, yeah, a lot of I rocks still. The, Maybe the that offset. offset. Yeah. yeah, which is about 50 meters, so that seems about right. Right at the bottom of the screen, those wouldn't be nodules, were they? Is that just like a botryoidal texture? Yeah, I think it's just the yeah. botryoids showing through the sediment. Where are you thinking? I was just down here, but oh, it looks okay. kind of like this, yeah, too. Yeah, so. and that sediment. In the left? What There's the that? bottom right. Oh, well, what's There's on the bottom left? Oh, that's oh, a shrimp. Shrimp or a star? Do you want to look at this yeah, shrimp? Yeah, let's take a look at it. Is it? Zoom, Dave. I think it might be a star. Star. Oh, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like living under his rock. <laughs> <so. Yep. laughs> um, I feel like I've seen this one before. It's like Paul Aster or something like that. I feel like that doesn't sound right though. He's really squished in there. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like he's resting on his elbow, thinking. Yeah. Oh, he does. <laughs> <laughs> or posing, posing like Rose. Yeah. <laughs> <Titanic. laughs> deep like deep thoughts. Your, <laughs> paint me like one of your sea stars. <laughs> Paint me like one of your sea stars, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I'll be here all day. <laughs> Just kidding, I'll be here till 12. Paul Asterius. 
That's just what I came across. Oh, yeah. yeah. Same I was time. like, I knew it was Paul something. <laughs> oh, same. I clicked Paul. the same thing. This one also yeah. looks like it's like so dancing. They yeah, they always seem to have be in like really awkward poses. <laughs> Pretty cute. All right. Simultaneous yep. ID. Yeah. Star. Go with the star. See what else we can see. So also the nodules that Bob was looking for are bigger than these. Yeah. yeah. Marble size. Yeah. Bigger than that, they're like. Can we see the other swishy bit? That's a little the size. Up higher. <laughs> Ping sure. pong ball size. Okay. Anemone. Cop coral. I think it might be an anemone. Mm, zoom here, Dave. Anemone. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Alarm. <laughs> oh, a worm. Is that a worm? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think it actually might be uh, a placophorin, so a type of mollusk that doesn't have a shell. Hmm. Oh. So this is an anemone. Correct. Cool. Uh, should we slurp the slurp the worm thing? The aplacophorin. Yeah, Steve is saying it might be worth a slurp here. All right, let's slurp it. Okay. Can you come by, Dave? I'll just see if I get to get closer. I think I do. A plaque of foreign. Plaque of foreign. That's a kind of a funny angle. Got bump, bumpy place to land. Steve so says it looks different than the species that eat corals. Yeah. Yeah, so most of the time when we see them, they are at the base of corals or are wrapped around the branches of a coral. And they, they feed on them coral. It's good there. This Under one is nowhere near a coral, so what's it doing? Sure. Maybe it's just free living, doing its own oh. weird thing. Oh. What jars do we have available? Plenty. Let's go with flush jar two. The only one that's occupied is one. Not too many biological <laughs> samples on this dive so far. I'm going to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that keeps keeps getting you. It's like forcing the habit. Yeah. Like, I don't even think about it. Yeah, like, I haven't even done it that much, and I always <laughs> I always put my thumb on it just to do it, and then like stop myself. I'm oh, gonna set up cameras. What uh, jar are we gonna go for? Two. Two. Megan, what do you think about sampling the anemone as well while we're here? Yeah, let's go for it. Will that also be a slurp? Yeah, yeah, we'll slurp them both. Same jar, different jars? Different jars. Yeah, I'm different. Keep them separate.
worm first. Worm first. Oh. All right, suction coming on. Wait for it. Bum ba da da. There it is. There is. The jar. Oh. All right. Kay. So now jar three. Yes. Oh, other way. Oh, other way. Doesn't want to go in reverse. Oh. Seven. Five, four, one. Oh, come on. Suction coming on. There's a little nub in there. Oh. Thanks. Yeah, can't get the nubbin. No nubbin. Did it like suck the body off the thing and left the sail with it? Yep, probably. The pe pedal disc. I haven't you seen it. You zoom in on that, Dave? Steve says it's retracted. Oh, that so could it's still there. It's yeah, still, apparently, uh, might be sucked way in. Might be tough to get this one. Yeah, I guess this one doesn't want to come with us. Yeah. Get, All right. We can we'll, we we try. Oh, yeah. it might might end up mangling it. Is what Steve's thinking. Okay. So uh, yeah, we'll move really on. Fragile. That's quite a All retraction. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, did did half of it go and? <laughs> While we're here, can we zoom that little sponge on the rock? Sure. So we done with the slurp? Yes. No blue button. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Caught me in time. <laughs> you want to zoom there, Dave? Hmm. Well, it's a very, very tiny sponge. Um, could be a demo sponge or it could be a glass sponge. Yeah. It's too small to tell. Look like another chest up left of it. Above and to the left, smaller. But <coughs> oh. Oops, it is. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so little. Little ones. Cool. All right. Uh, let me right. know when you're satisfied with the zoom. Yep, I'm satisfied. Ready to All pick right. up. Keep going. Trucking. Bridge now. Can we make a 20 meter move? Zero, seven, zero. Thanks. 
Trucking on to waypoint four. That rock kind of looks like a manatee. <laughs> <laughs> That sea cucumber kind of looks like a cucumber. <laughs> yeah, but like, but Ooh, pink, really. Be. There's a lot of them. There's there like are. three of them. There's three. Yeah. Kind of like a congregation. Party. A salad. <laughs> <laughs> it's so artisanal with all those colors. Corals. Yeah. And another sea cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> Chrysogorgia. There's a bamboo. bamboo. Oh, it looks like a polyopagon Poly type of glass sponge. So that might be what those small sponges we were looking at were um, very small versions of this polyopagon sponge. Would you like to zoom in anything or just keep yeah, going? Yeah, let's okay. uh, zoom the bamboo. Okay. There seems to be a sponge in front of it, too, so two per. And a yeah. cucumber in the back. Uh, another one, yeah. I, like, I wonder if it's like a breeding time or something. Hmm. They're all so close together. So that's like five sea cucumbers in only a couple meters. Zoom there, Dave. Oh, never mind. Stampede. <laughs> yeah. So this looks like it's an internodally branching bamboo coral. And there's a little polychaete on its branches and this sponge might be a demo sponge. So this is not a polyopagon like okay. the one to the side, yeah. It's different. And oh, she oh. Cucumber. the sea cucumber is taking off. Okay, you see that little like orangey thing at the base? That's another one of those uh, uh, aplacophorans that feeds on the corals. Is that a worm? That yellow it's thing? A, it's actually a mollusk. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. But it's a mollusk that doesn't have a shell. Another so unshelled mollusk. Yeah. yeah. Aplacophoran meaning without a shell. Cool. But that definitely looks different from the one that we just collected. And the typical kind that we often see associated with these these corals because they do feed on them. Very neat. All right. All right, I'm ready to go. So one of those sea cukes took off. Yeah. It's right underneath this. Took flight. I got some still cam shots of that. Kind of fun. Nice. Oh yeah, he's, uh, the cucumber swam right he, at it. Yeah, <laughs> right to us. Can we make a 20 meter move, 070? Mm, this one might be a sparse brancher. Is this the one we're looking for? Might be. Also, uh, there's this red bit 
on the uh, yeah. rock nice there. Blob. That might be an anthemastis. Down here? Yeah, let's zoom that real quick and then right. we'll focus on the bamboo. Oh, and a mega moth tunicate. Zoom here, Dave? What, what is this little smudgy smudge? Yep, it is a anthemastis mushroom coral with some of its polyps retracted. So it looks kind of funny. I'm good on this. All right. Let's look at the bamboo. Come back wood. Yeah, I think this might be a possible collection. Okay. This looks like something Mary would be interested in. It has these three main branches, and these guys are weird, scraggly branches. So it's super weird looking. What part of it would we want? Uh, um, let's just snip the tip. Near the top, or yeah. one of the branches. Uh, whichever part you want to snip. And if we can get a nice, good zoom of the polyps, that'd be helpful. Zoom in quick, Dave, here. Sorry. Yeah, it would be cool to get the scraggly branches, but since those are near the base, that would be really difficult. but some imagery of those scraggly ones would be okay. nice too, if we sat down. Yep. Come. Come wide a bit, Dave. Oh, drop down. I think there was a sponge below, so I don't want to run into it. Oh, that was a tunicate. Tunicate? Yeah. Well, I don't want to crush the tunicate. <laughs> Fair enough. No respect for the tunicate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe this uh, lower branch would be a good the, the candidate. Way down low? Or the yeah, the not the the low one that's pointing downwards, yeah. but this okay. yeah, that okay. one might be easier. Don't get, get too close. I mean, all right. And it has a scraggly branch too, so so is that four branches? One, two, three, three four. four. With like these those crazy little, little ones. weird ones. Yeah, those tiny guys there. That's, that's weird. You want to zoom in on it first? Yeah, let's zoom. All right, zoom in. Oh, even that one. Like, what's it doing? <laughs> well, it looks like we might get a bonus critter. The little hangy thingy? Yeah. What are those little white dots on the inside? Um, those are the um, reproductive tissues. Oh, okay. Yeah. How do corals reproduce? So they will um, produce their gametes okay, and then spawn on. them. Set up um, to take it. But some of them are brooders, so they'll like keep their gametes inside and brood them. Um, and a lot of them spawn. Just gonna do it for Just sort of let them out. Are you uh, stable? Into the water I can. Is this gonna be a snip and slurp or? Um, probably a snip and put it in the box. Because last time we got it stuck. Oh, Not a great two. spot, though. Yeah. Got a forward bio box open? Or oh, yes, both of them are open. Oh, great. Spin around and set, sit down or something. Yeah. And they okay. should be switched, so we should know. <laughs> B&A now. <laughs> Driving <laughs> me crazy. <laughs> yeah, or just, I think if you go over there, so I'd stretch out more, you know? I, okay. I'm just kind of like in a to gangly mode. Uh, 
That's probably okay. Alright. Looks like you could probably plant it there, maybe? Yeah, I'm gonna try. Yeah, yep. that was good. Uh, go for zoom. Like that much of it? Maybe? Yeah, that looks great. Sharpen those coral cutters. I think you got it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Where is this going? Slurp? Uh, forward, forward bio, bio box, box A. All right. I can back. Coming out. Ah, that looks so much better. <laughs> less confusing. Less, a lot less confusing. <laughs> no cognitive dissonance for half the watch. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting confusing when we were taking them out because it would say forward A, but it would be like, no, it's actually B. <laughs> oh, here we go. Nice. nice shake. Nice shake, Jake. <laughs> that was Bob. Oh, Bob. <laughs> We're a team. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he keeps me from pushing the blue button. <laughs> oh, there goes a scoop. Yeah, that's. Oh, no. Yeah. S Gotta pick that up. Scoop fell down. Are we gonna wanna put All it right. in the box? Yeah. Well, oh. probably starboard. Uh, yeah, starboard side, right? We have room in the starboard side for the scoop? We gotta, we'll we gotta come up yeah, with a more secure in. scoop setup. Yeah. Yeah, starboard. We probably fit it with E. We lost three Back scoops last season. Hmm. This is our second one this season. Yeah. We go through too many scoops. We're gonna be on the Mach 5 soon. Mark 5. That say Mark or Mark? Mark. Mark. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mark. Can we zoom in on it? So starboard E. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Come here, you. Ah, sorry. Right. Back up. <coughs> okay. Can we zoom in. Ah. Hold still, Jake. I'm <laughs> trying. <laughs> All right. Let me just.
sebu. Oh, pakai. Can you switch the other camera too? It's really hard when you don't have cameras on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all in the fun. Yeah. Which one? Sorry. You can put it in E. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go back in. Might even be able to fish it out of there if we need it. <laughs> yeah. Is it normally that tethered? It's it's tie it's magnetized onto the plate ah. and it's held with a tie wrap. But yeah, sometimes it just catches and when yeah. we rack out with the tool tray, and, or usually on recovery or a, or a yeah. launch, it gets with all the prop wash. It gets done. oh, all right, come back. I guess if you try to tether that, you're going to create a tangle hazard. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we wouldn't want to do that. True. I don't like strings. They get caught in thrusters. Yeah. That's my rule for cup bags. <laughs> like, no yeah. strings. No strings attached. <laughs> no blue button. No blue button. <laughs> it's so tempting, though. It's right there. Yep. <laughs> So shiny. It's so shiny, <laughs> so blue. Oh, I just want to push it. <laughs> well, now that it has its little haircut, it's all even with its side. <laughs> <laughs> just a little pruning. <laughs> just a little deep sea, deep sea coral pruning. Well, they will grow back. Just a reminder for those who are watching, if you are looking for stats like the Hercules depth, water temperature, wind speed, and that sort of thing, you can find that live data on the right-hand side of our live stream at nautiluslive.org. Love it so much. Wait, <laughs> this is so cool. It doesn't even look real. It looks like a cartoon character or something. I can't believe we've seen two oh on our watch, three on our watch. Go for Zoom, Dave. Oh my we've god. We've got good I'm octopus squirming. energy right now. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh my god, you I want to Zoom in on the Argus view too when you get a chance. <gasps> and this one is so much more robust yeah. than the one we saw. Oh. It's so much bigger. <laughs> What is that behavior called? I don't know. Stretching? <laughs> stretching. <laughs> it's the octopus lasers move. On? It's so big, too. Look big at stretch. The lasers. It's called I am a rock. I am a rock. You Go can't on. see me. Okay. <laughs> lasers off. Good. Perfect. I love how wrinkly wow. their skin looks. It's oh, my like, God. I love it. I could stay yeah. here forever. Let's not go anywhere else. Startle bits. Oh, nice. Oh, my gosh. Goodbye, friend. It's a big one. Yeah. I love how you can see their eyeball through their skin. <laughs> um, that I don't love so much. But <laughs> <laughs> it has really cute eyes, though. It yeah, it is really cute. Oh, he's, he's gonna land, maybe. He's coming in for landing. Woo. Landing gear. <laughs> <laughs> Full flaps. Gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is my favorite thing I've seen throughout the entire cruise. 
They've been found at depths of 7,000 meters. Wow. It's coming down right by a sponge. Be careful, don't get poked. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. So cooperative, too, just chilling. Oh, it's oh spoke probably chilling. not thrilled oh. with our presence. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so cool. It <laughs> is. It's so cute. I can't get over it. What? What is, is that, that down there? What is it? I don't know. Yeah, oh. once we're done with the octopus, I want to look at some other weird thing. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how old this octopus is. It's probably a decent age. So big. So the deep sea octopuses do live a lot longer than our their shallow water cousins. It's like it's clapping. <laughs> It'd be really cool to see its underside too. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it would cooperate <laughs> with that. Excuse me, sir. Do you mind? <laughs> Could you just do some uh, somersaults for us, please? <laughs> do deep sea octopuses ink? Um, I've never seen one do it, so I'm not sure. Oh, I love when they curl Ooh. at the bottom. Ooh. Wow, this is amazing. I could watch this all day. Me too. I'm taking like a million screenshots right now. <laughs> wow, the texture. It just gives me elephant vibes right there. <laughs> so I, I just think the name is so appropriate. Yeah. Here. So what can they detect with their eyes, I wonder? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, obviously, I think they can They can obviously detect light, um, but can they resolve an image? I'm not sure. So yeah, maybe tuned in for bioluminescence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be very advantageous so that they can find, you know, good prey items to feed on. Um, a lot of deep sea animals have bioluminescent capabilities. Oh, it's doing a thing. What is it doing? That's the prop wash. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. Well, maybe we can back off a bit and look at, what. what is it that you were looking at? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it was. It was weird looking. But it didn't look like it was going to move away, so. Goodbye, friend. Oh, oh you're so oh. cute. Yeah, oh, it's right there. Maybe I can yeah. frame them both up so you can yeah. both, both up. Both things. That's such a big one. It's huge. It is really big. Jonathan's asking, can we get it in 4K? I, uh... I've got a lot of still cam shots. I'm not uh, up to speed with a new setup for the 4K. Sorry. But these shots are really good, so don't worry, Jonathan. Bring you will not be disappointed. This guy? Mm -hmm. uh, it might be already up. Uh, yeah, it's that one. This one? Think? Yeah. And if you want to bring it up on that screen, you can do. It almost looks like a snail with a thing on its back. Yeah, and like it's a clear snail. I can't think of what it is uh, from uh, here. It's I think, weird looking. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. There's the 4K. Yeah, that's disabled. They've oh. got a new GUI. I see. I see. I don't know how. I'm not sure how to take a grab. I do it. Okay. Yeah, Dave, Dave does the grab. 
Oh, I don't want to startle it. I think I'm going to. But. So cute. I love how they coil their tentacles. I know. Oh. Their arms. My heart is bursting. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy was just crocheting one of these last night. Yeah. It was a good omen. Megan Steve says the gelatinous thing is a predatory tunicate with a velutunid snail, the purple orb on it. Okay. I was like, what's the, the brown mm. thing? <laughs> so it's two animals. That makes more sense. I mean, I was assuming it was like one animal. Yeah, that's I, what I it couldn't like. make any <laughs> sense of it. <laughs> Might be worth a collection. How's that? That's what Steve said. I grabbed a couple of 4K. Uh, Good. Thanks. Wow. All right, let's see if we can get the uh, tunicate. Oh, he's coming right at us. I want to make sure this guy doesn't swim towards us. Bye. Be careful out there. That's exactly what it's doing. Either <laughs> way. You don't want to swim near our thrusters. Uh, oh, no. No. Ah, uh, tornado. Show us how fast you can swim. Oh my god, it's so cute. Just the way it uses that to swim. <coughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't. It's a cool Argo shot. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> great. It is pretty big. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, wow. It's like he's trying to pose for us, and I'm not mad about it. Yeah, it's like, I know I'm gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not getting any of the pictures. Are you doing them manually? Oh, it stopped working again. It was just working. Oh, there you go. Sometimes it takes a while for it to load. It's okay. been slow, especially when you hit it you a lot of times. Shot? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, look at that. Whoa. Yep, hey, Let's do the thing right I asked there. for. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Spread out. <laughs> wow. Oh my god, even that Argus view is so cool. I love that Argus view. That's awesome. awesome. I mean, we could follow this guy all day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> Say less. Yeah. This is probably the coolest Argus shot I've seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you beat this? Well, we were know, instructed to get good Argus shots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think we're delivering right now. All for you, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> the still camo got him with this nice crinoid in the back. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay, one more. This might end up being the most well documented Dumbo <laughs> ever. <laughs> it's the most cooperative one I've ever seen. <laughs> Dumbo's like, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, he's probably getting pretty tired. <laughs> yeah, we want to get good observations without unduly stressing the animal. So uh, it's a balance, that's for sure. Yeah, that's. We don't want to harass it too okay. much. Let's go back to the the, the other tunicate. thing. Yeah, tunicate let's snail let's thing. Try to collect that tunicate. Goodbye. Bye, Dumbo <laughs> octopus. Let him rest by his palm tree. <laughs> Pina colada time. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. The floater. Floating thing. Hmm. 
get a zoom, Dave? Oh, it's something curled up. What are you? Wanna, what is it? Is what? that what we saw last night? Oh, yeah, that's like the little um, pleurobrake. Yeah. Should we, oh, yeah. Can we slurp we it slurp out of the water? <laughs> that would be a good collect if we could. <laughs> Although it's... <laughs> it's <laughs> ready. We can come by, Dave. I'll try there you go. Settle down, buddy. We did see it in the animal guide, though. I did have a question mark next to it. Yeah, so it's that's true. Uh, I don't think it's ever sure. been collected. Yeah. yeah. Great. Stay there. Challenge is on. Don't go anywhere. Do we have, do we have an open chamber? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have a lot. We have forward bio box B. I that think one. they want to slurp this. You want to slurp it? Then we yeah. can do slurp jar three. Yeah, and seeing how floaty it seems to be. Yeah, that, we don't want to come out of the box. Right? Yep. Don't go anywhere. You want to fly the hose, or uh, what do you want to do? I don't know if I'll be able to get down there. But you want me to pick it up? Uh oh, it's going. Are you going to try a drive-by? <laughs> you could try a drive-by, right? I mean, he's pretty close to that rock. It's yeah. yeah. I don't know if the... Might be better to pick it up. I wonder how it's moving around. It's just yep. floating. <laughs> Looks like it's settled. Are we on the right jar? Yes. Okay. Can we zoom in? Ready for slurp. Chlorobrank. All right. Ready? Yeah. Coming up. Got oh, it. Nice and oh. easy. I already had Quick. it up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even Wait hit the button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I already had it up. <laughs> it's not in the jar yet, though. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Increase. There it is. It's in. Oh. Can you zoom out? Bigger yeah, than I thought out. it would be. Wow. Very I think cool. it's cool. Get rid of this. That looks weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what exactly is it? It's um, related to the nudibranchs, but instead of having its gills on the outside, like a nudibranch, it has its gills on the inside. So it's a pleurobranch. And even the photo online for the ID guide has it curled up like that. And the first one that we saw during our last watch was also curled up. So yep. really interesting behavior. Alright, now we gotta find that tunicate. I think it was over this way. Oh right down here. So See that it. was ninety five? Yes. Zoom there, Dave. Any idea? <laughs> <laughs> um, I see your face. It looks. <laughs> 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 uh, it's it's a thing. It's a thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's definitely a thing. Um, yeah, Steve saying predatory tunicate with a volutinid snail, purple orb on it. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I know. The new, I knew the predatory tunicate. That's the me megalodicopia. But yeah, the the brown blob. I, I hadn't seen that before. That's weird. Um, did so. Steve say we wanted to collect? Yeah, yeah worth yeah, worth a collection. Okay. I guess Let both of them. Get a little closer. You come on, Do you want so. both of them or? Just I think the so. Yeah. Let me check okay. on that. 
Yeah, he didn't I don't see how you could get just <laughs> one. <laughs> I knew where, yeah, I think if we slurped it, we'd get the whole specific. thing. Okay, I'm definitely going to be hanging out in the wet lab after this dive. Oh, yes. <laughs> Shotgun, I'm processing the plural brink. <laughs> I'm going to see it. So you think both will go up the hose, huh? Oh, it looks like the uh, uh, snail's oh, leaving. Oh, oh, oh. Snail's leaving. So it's uh, a separate sample. I'm not sure which one is of interest. Oh. Here, let me see. Unless, oh. like, this I don't is. I blow it away. Oh, okay. It's going to go. Yeah, I think what we are we should going just, for here? What we, yeah, I think so, we should collect both of them uh, just in case. I'm going to check. Slurp. Oh, it's uh, running get, away. Yeah, that'll be tough. Uh, it's going to set deck down there. Going to get the on the right jar? You're still on three. There you go. Four. Okay. Checking with Steve. I think we could go for the snail first. Let's see if he's in the lounge. He's, he's, the, he's online. He's the mobile critter, so. Yeah. Are you flying the hose? <laughs> you can fly the hose if you want to fly the hose. I'll be on the. All right. I'm on slow to try. Duty. <laughs> it's a good current still. Or is that our wash? Yeah, I'm ready. Slurp jar ready? four. Oh. Get it, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> this would be another legendary oh. move if you could oh. get it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, there, there it is. is. It's oh, man. Lower right. Not cooperative. Oh, uh, oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh oh. Okay, so now that's up, maybe it'll be easier. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to stay positive. <laughs> like, is someone going to tell her? <laughs> oh, oh. Man. It's like Quidditch. Like, you're trying to He's, grab the. <laughs> it's nice with you, man. <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm holding my breath. All right, suck, suck, suck. Oh, oh. Slower. Lower. I can't get low enough. You have to back down. Now. Where'd it go? Oh. Yeah, I don't think I can get the, right. the hose low enough. At the Oh, it might be stuck. It's oh. stuck. I guess oh. stick it in oh. the box. Hmm. Forward bio? Oh, yeah. Man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's going to be floaty. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh I think it be. went. It uh, went? Yeah. Oh, let's hope it doesn't <laughs> get stuck. Oh, let's see. Go all yeah. the way, buddy. Come on, you can do it. Oh, Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Great oh. job. It's gelatinous glory. Yeah. Suction. Okay, not Got sure it. if the predatory tunicate is of interest or not. Uh, either. I think that would be really hard to preserve. Uh huh. Um, okay. So I don't, I don't think it's the most ideal specimen. Oops. Steve said it was a velutinid. Velutinid snail. No blue button, no blue button, no blue no button. Blue button. <laughs> no blue button. <laughs> Two good collects. Always blue, yeah. always blue. <laughs> and some great video. Yeah. Good spot. I'm happy. Very fruitful little area. Yeah. All right. Moving on. And that was sample 96. Right. We have a lot of people asking about the difference in pressure and how that's going to impact the um, samples when they get to the surface. 
Um, so pressure and temperature will impact our animals greatly. Uh, that change in coming to the surface, they, they won't make it alive. Um, but that's okay um, because we will be preserving them and appreciating them. But some scientists that are interested in studying behavior in the lab, they've developed uh, pressure chambers to keep animals at the correct pressure and temperature to recover them alive. It's just challenging to get them to go inside, you know? So yeah. there's, there's a lot of engineering challenges to bringing animals back alive and then keeping them that way in the lab. But these will maintain their shape, right? I mean, yeah. they're not gonna... There's no air bladders in there to expand. Correct, or, yeah. right. So our invertebrates, they'll come back um, intact and as we've seen them on camera. They're not going to bloat um, like some deep sea fishes were. But it's mainly that, that change in temperature is what really impacts them. If they warm up too much, then we can have degradation in the tissues. So that's what makes it really important to process them as quickly as possible once we get them in the lab. And since you mentioned temperature, yeah, that's one of the important goals is to document, you know, what's living where, how, and how they're interacting with each other um, in the deep because ocean warming is being transferred down to the deep slowly. They've evolved for very steady state conditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's unknown how any sort of temperature change will impact these animals at depth. And then any changes in the surface water can impact productivity at the surface, which will then in turn impact any animals growing in the deep ocean. There's a thing in the sand. Yeah, it's probably one of those Urchin. tube anemones. Oh, an enemy. Yeah. Oh, good eye. I'm really having trouble spotting things. I think it's the just really rockiness. And it helps having this little yeah, we've got thing, it oh. we right can, here. Go for yeah. zoom, Dave. Because I have a hard time seeing far away, <laughs> especially now that I'm not wearing my glasses. Conveniently, seem to forget every time on my watch. <laughs> I almost forgot to put in my contacts this morning. Mm -hmm. That was fun. I like walked out the door. I'm like, I can't see. <laughs> well, I've got, got to fix that. Yeah, I think if anyone needs to be able to see, it's our navigator <laughs> and our RV pilots <laughs> and the video engineer. Yeah, it's probably good everyone can see. <laughs> yeah. I like tube anemones. I love how long and graceful they just drift. Yeah, these, these guys are really hard to collect just because they can pull back down into the, the sediment inside their tubes, and their tubes can actually extend quite a far ways down into the sediment, so getting on, them Dave. is challenging. Steve said thanks. He couldn't see. He had to step out. Pillowy, for sure. Yeah. yeah. 
So what do we mean when we say pillowy? Oh, there's another one of those Mega Mouth tunicates. Oh, Mega Mouth. Mega Mouth. That refers to the type of lava flow. It's very bulbous, uh, pillow-shaped balls. You get it when you have a lava flow, and we'll on the outside, it cools really quickly. We call that quenching. So the outside kind of forms into this rock, but the inside is still hot magma. And then you push a bunch of magma through it, and it kind of inflates it. Oh, you get a good look at the stalk there. Yeah. This is weird. It's it's weird. Yeah, they are real weird. <laughs> the things that you can just see everything inside of them, it's just What's weird. What's inside? Yeah. It's it's oh. Huh. Yeah, I guess that's its digestive system. What is this? A tunicate. Tunicate. Mega mouth tunicate. Is that one of those things we sampled on the back? The, the acorn? Uh, what's no. the purple thing? The purple thing is a... Velunid, velutinid. Oh, it's part of it. I mean, I'm gonna guess it's its own organs. It's not something it. Yeah, I think that's it. Part of it. Yeah, not something that happened to swim into its mouth. <laughs> so things do swim into the mouth and live in there. Wow. So oh, they'll live there. But that does happen. You see, like. Polychaetes and small crustaceans huh. uh, making their homes inside these tunicates. Wow. Does it look like yeah. a spider web on the back of that rock also? Yeah, yeah. it kind of does. Yeah, there's like little sea schmutz. <laughs> the uh, official term. Yep. So that mouth just stays oh, open all the wait, time. Actually, like no, I think it is. It. It's on the back. It might oh. be that same thing we just collected. A floor blank. You got Jake, it. Jake was right. Jake knew it. Good job, Jake. So it's both. <laughs> it's, you can see the smaller things it's got. And yeah. Uh, and the yeah. back thing, it might be that ballooned. Those ballooned snails must really like tunicates. They must. I was like, that looks similar to what we just saw. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's like the right color. I have no idea what it is. Texture. But we sucked it. That was a lot smaller. <laughs> That one heard that collection is going on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we got the big one, though. Yeah. Uh, there was another thing on the rock just behind it. Yeah. I wonder if the snail's eating the tuna kit or just chilling. I don't know. Ooh, oh, this right here? Cup yeah, coral anemone. Oh, oh my gosh. Anemone. I don't know. Tube anemone. It's between a cup coral and an anemone. The second pair of tentacles. Well, so Ooh. what I see is the difference is the that body of of the uh, anemone is sort of brown and okay. kind of textury. Yes. So that's what tells me that it's an anemone. And not, okay. Yeah, so this might um, be in, what family? It starts with an H. I'm blinking on the <laughs> name. <laughs> but it's definitely an anemone. Hormatheity. That's the that's the name. Hormatheity. It's pretty. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's, I'm keep good. Trucking. Let's, uh, let's keep going. Bridge now. Can we make a twenty meter move? Zero seven zero. Another halosauridae. Hal Am I saying that right? Halosaur? For the anemone? Hormatheid? With an H. H? Hormatheidae was the name of the anemone we were just looking at. Oh, okay.
What's this weight thing? Ooh. White thing. Stock or something? Old stock? Oh, yeah, it's probably yeah. an old attachment. Yeah. Becoming the octopod, watch the <laughs> final dive. See, that's the kind of name I want. Came I want to be the <laughs> octopod watch. I'm all right with that. Now let's zoom this uh, fuzzy. Yeah. I need to take numbers. Ooh. So this is a Corala Morpharian. So it's uh, one of those anemones that's got the little white balls on the ends of the tentacles. So it's not true anemone, but an enemy creature. So what are the light bulbs at the end of the tentacles? I don't know what they are, but they have them. Okay. They, they just look so festive, you know? That'd be pretty cool. Sure do. That's how you know it's a Corral Morphanian, if they have the little white balls at the ends. I wonder if they, well, no. They one of those at the top of your Christmas tree. Yeah, I mean, I would. Yeah. <laughs> so Steve says the bulbs are parts of the tentacle packed with nematocysts, very powerful stinging organs. Hmm. Do not touch. Now. What if come into Can my zone and I eat move? you? Zero, six, zero. I'll sting and eat you. typically see when we come up with well we started at five right so we're above what our starting pressure was yeah <laughs> so that's a dead giveaway something yeah. deep red back there yeah i think it might be another one of those mushroom corals cucumber chrysogorgia chrysogorgia out uh, a cucumber yellow and, and anthemastis mushroom coral Do you want to zoom? Oh, sure. Why not? Get a quick zoom, Dave, here. Yeah, just a, a quickie. Snap zoom. More color in the deep. That's got a little polychaete on it. There's a tiny sponge over to the right. I saw it as we zoomed in. Uh, oh, this one? With the, oh, with the yeah. Beads. It's so small. <laughs> Cute. Oh, there's oh, yeah. the beads. I didn't see that one. That's a demo sponge that we don't know, and we've been calling it the kebab sponge <laughs> because <laughs> it looks like a kebab. And wow. That's one we sampled, right? Yeah, yeah. that's been sampled. We sampled yeah. a large one too. Yeah. Oh. It reminds me of those bead bracelets you could get like in the '90s. Oh yeah. You probably still get them, but they were really popular. Yeah, they they like came in different like gemstone or semi-precious stones that like <laughs> told yeah. you what kind of energy you had. Yeah, that's what that reminds me of. <laughs> Super pretty. I want demo sponge energy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the other little sponge right. was a uh, bolosoma. <coughs> and a Stalked crinoid up there? Or? Oh, that's a Riddick Oh, a Riddick yeah, right. <laughs> the spiral one. Yeah. There is that yellow crinoid over there. 
This is a nice little like oasis. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good rock. So this is a dead sponge stalk with a crinoid on top. There's a droopy coil coral. Oh yeah, <laughs> hanging off. <laughs> That's weird. Hmm. Usually they don't do that. Yeah, usually they're like sticking straight up. Yeah, usually they like to point upwards or sideways. Not usually downwards, but you know. Is that a bad sign for the health of it? No, I think it's doing pretty good. I think it found a really nice spot and is <laughs> kind of doing its thing. Like, yeah, you oh. know what? I'm going to be different. What, does it have some yellow on it? Can you get a zoom, Dave? Yeah, let's zoom this What one. kind of coral is this? This, I think, is a primnoid coral. Non-branched primnoid. Steve is guessing Candidella gigantea. Yep, that's what I think, too. Growing upside down. Yep. Hanging He's pretty happy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know what? This is the best place for me. Why fight gravity? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do when you reach the ground? This one's got the right idea. Well, uh, yeah, when you're in the bottom of a ledge, you've got good current flow beneath you. Mm -hmm. oh, so it was sorry. like, yeah, look at that. Right. Wow. That's a really interesting rock, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's definitely in place. It just sort of really bulbous. Yeah. It's where the flow's stopped. We have a suggestion for our watch name, the Cephalo Pals. Aww. That's, kind That's of really cute. cute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Nice sponge off of Yeah. That. Let's check out that coral over okay. there. Which one? Bottom? Um, the one on the rock. Oh, I see. Is that a sea pen? Yep, that's a sea pen in the sand. Probably that panatula that we've been seeing, the yellow one. I hope we see another one of those rock pens so we could get a sample. I know. I feel bad that we didn't think to sample it. What's that yellow thing? Crinoid. Okay. Is this a bamboo coral or a primnoid? It is a bamboo. Bamboo coral. You zoom, Dave? Uh, where is it branching? It looks like it's branching internodally. Nice. Is that a little star peeking out? Looks yep, like it. Yeah, a little brittle star. What are these it's little amphipods? Oh. There we go. And after we take a look at this, if we can... Um, it's like four amphipods. They're yeah. like bees pollinating flowers. I know, they're yeah. like... Boop, 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 boop. Uh, or maybe, uh, is that an amphipod? What is that? Thing? A worm thing in the background. Um, 
It's hard to say. I think I saw a large sponge off to the left. Yeah. Uh, the distance. Yeah, I think that might be a polyopagon. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was sediment or a sponge. Yeah. Go check it out. Yeah, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, let's take a look. Bridge now. Can we make a 20 meter move, 060? Where'd it go? Thank you. Yeah, where did it go? More off to the left. There, there it is. is. Yep, that's a polyopagon. So a sponge in the family Pharaonomatidae. They're and quite common thing? at these depths. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What is that brown that thing to the right? Bathy? Yeah, I think it's, it's a black coral, possibly a bathy pathy. So that might be worth a look. Kay. It looks, or a lily pathies, actually. Good healthy sponge. There's more kebab sponge. <laughs> oh. Steve says, good enough area to maybe take a skin when we have a chance. Yeah, I see Chrysogorgia in the background maybe. So yeah, we've got good diversity here. Chiniskins are open. Everything but six. Oh, everything but one. Oh. I only took one sample so far. Okay. Hard to see any associates from this angle, but yeah. maybe we could get a good look at the coral from here. Yeah, let's take a look at that black coral. You can wait a bit, Dave. Thanks. That's a good angle for that. Good look at that black skeleton. Yeah, this one you can definitely see the black skeleton through the tissue, which is a lighter brown color. Yeah, this one looks more like a lily pathies. So its branches have side branches, very sort of fluffy looking. And it might have a polychaete associate on the other side. You see that sort of bluish tint near the oh, yeah. base? Yeah. Just going to check to see if they're OK with taking a niskin while we're sitting here, or if we want to rise up. It's having an issue sending the messages. What's that? It hasn't come through yet. Hmm. Sitting on the floor is fine, so yeah, we could do a niskin after we're finished with this zoom. Does Steve know if we've collected this type of black coral before? Check on that. Two to six is available, so whichever one works best for you. We'll get two. All right, two. All set. Where are the? Okay, I see. Watching. Yep. Yep. Watching. Popped. Click. Popped. Uh, Steve says maybe we could grab a. Uh, small bit with a branch point of the coral okay if possible 
So maybe like the top third or so. Is it snip and slurp? Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe that's best. Yeah. yeah. Small piece, so. And the next available jar is five. Okay. Let me give more zoom. Hmm. Uh, more zoom? <laughs> <laughs> and these are protonaceous, so it's going to be a little tricky to snap off, huh? Yeah, it's going to be like yeah. nylon line. It might end up breaking off. Yeah, we might uh, end up with the whole thing. Mm -hmm. so. If that oh. happens, we can just stick it in a bio box. Yeah, yeah, we'll just do our best here. Is that going to be enough? All right, we don't have a branch point. point. Need a little lower. Stereo. <laughs> 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 Megan, did you say it's a leopathies? Uh, lily pathies. Lily pathies. Get over there. Perfect. That's wide branches. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's uh, lots of associates, so if it's yeah. easier, maybe you could clip it near the clip that it looks face. Good. That looks pretty good. Oh, the poly keeps some away. Yeah, they're all jumping off. I think you might have got I it. I think you got it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like the base snapped back. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Yep. Wow, great Good job. Jeremy Horowitz is a uh, scientist of shore, says it might be a Lillipathies. Rita Marie. Going in I the loved slurp. her in West Side Story. Yes, plus <laughs> jar five. Uh, forward bio box. Oh. Forward bio box. Oh, what, what do you think? What are we doing? Um, it might get stuck in the hose. Do you think it, it'll get stuck? I think you rotate, see how long the pieces. You know I, mean? I think it's again? pretty big for the hose. Yeah, so. yeah let's just stick That's it pretty in long. the bio get box. Forward bio. Uh, bio box B, because the bamboo coral is okay. an A. Yeah. Pop it out. Yeah, the starboard side there. <laughs> go down. Double grab. Go, Double go, grab. go, 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 go. Get in there. All right. <laughs> oh. oh. Come back. Ah. Ah. He's getting ah. away. He's escaping. Oh. Nice. What a grab. Nice job. <laughs> Not in a box yet. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Go, there. go, go. Gravity, gravity, gravity. Right. There Two it goes. Woohoo! Stay. Okay, good collect. That was
Chris Sample 98. Man, that thumb just wants to go for that blue button. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the more you talk about it, the more you <laughs> want to touch it. Uh. All right. I gotta zoom back. Whoa, that's a nice pillow. Yep. It's like an oozy tube of toothpaste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thing. There's a thing on the thing. Yep. Mushroom coral? Yeah. Yes, the mushroom. Mushroom. That one might be Anthemastus tachinotis. They have the really long bodies. There's another one. Yeah, it's a big one. Yep, that's definitely Anthemastus tachinotis. What's that yellow thing on the rock? A yellow thing on the rock. Got it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pink coral. Yeah. I don't see it. It's over on to the left. left. Ah. You want to look at it? Um, yeah, well, real Take quick. Let's see what we got. It's good to confirm if it's hemichorallium. There's some more stuff on the rock on the back. Yep. I think I saw a cliptophora back there. Get a zoom, Dave. The Chrysogorgia on the left, maybe. Yep, that's definitely Chrysogorgia. That looks uh, like bubble gum. Actually, I think this might be hemichorallium. What's wow, the semi precious yeah. or precious coral. Is this bubble gum coral? No, this is the, the pink coral, the hemichorallium oh, coral. Man. So it only has the pair of polyps at okay. the ends. Okay. And then the base looks more white, so that usually indicates that that's the uh, skeleton color. Uh, Paragorgia, their skeleton tends to be more yellowish. I see. And the uh, hemichoraliums, their skeleton is that pink color. Got it. Cool, thanks. It's pretty All sturdy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Bob, a lot of people are asking, what is the blue button? <laughs> <laughs> The blue button is a hydraulic valve control for the craft manipulator. And we have had to make a little bit of modification to the control of the arm to avoid having to open our main electronics bottle. And in doing that, I've made it so that... <laughs> it's a booby trap. <laughs> it's a booby <laughs> trap. <laughs> so, yeah, the things have to be done in a specific sequence that goes against what my my mind is trained to do and <laughs> mm. yeah and if i turn off that blue button can we zoom this one <laughs> it makes the yeah. arm go on its own <laughs> <laughs> mm. so plan is to fix that on the on the turnaround here in honolulu oh. zoom there dave
So this is a primnoid coral, probably a calyptrophora. Sorry, I'm bouncing a little bit. It looks very happy here. Mm -hmm. Certainly does. It found a nice rock. Yeah. Happy and healthy. Mm -hmm. Bridge nav. All right. I come back wide. Yep. Steve says we make either. A Twenty meter move. Zero six zero. Calyptophora. Calyptophora. Either Clarky or Antilla. Oh, that guy. There's an uh, anemone that we haven't seen yet down on that rock. It's kind of orange. Mm -hmm. Looks like Feliactus. So that's another anemone in the family Hormatheidae. I get the front view of it. I'm going to take out part of a wrap anyway, I think. Oh, no, I'm going the wrong way. And something in front of it. Yeah, there's a Chrysogorgia and then a Paragorgia. So it's not particularly high density that we're seeing, but we are seeing good diversity. Mm -hmm. it's spread over a large area. Zoom, Dave. There. It's a it's a medium density, I would say. Mm-hmm. Because we're consistently seeing corals throughout our our dive. That's and a cool looking. Oh, <laughs> wow. Cool. Yeah. So Feliactus has over a hundred tentacles and this sort of really rough. Um, brown body texture and then if you remember the coral we were just looking at only had two polyps at the ends of the branches this definitely has more than two so that means that this one Here's your is bubble a paragorgia <laughs> the bubblegum coral okay even though they're exactly the same color amazing <laughs> so color is can be deceiving sometimes so you can't always just be like, oh yeah, everything is hemichralium or everything is paragorgia. It makes my job hard. Yeah, they evolved into such a similar body shape. Mm -hmm. Skeleton shape. Yeah, and some of the paragorgias are so similar that even experts have a hard time telling them apart in the video. It's not until, you know, the paragorgia wavers in the, the current or they take a sample and it shatters that it becomes apparent. Okay. Yeah, I'm good here. All good. So phylogenetically sister groups, according to Steve. See the ripples, strong currents here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's probably why there's so many nice little corals. now. What's up? Looks Can like we make a 20 meter move, zero six zero? Might be a larger bamboo in the distance. I saw on the still camera. Yeah, I saw that too. Oh, I see. Leaving what? That's yeah. the one. It's all about the shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the shot. I gotta record record you saying that and send it to Jonathan. That's good. Yeah. It's all about the shot. <laughs> it's all about the shot. But is it sparse enough? <laughs> I don't know. It is pretty sparse. It's not densely branching. It's not bushy in any respect. Let's just 
take a really good look at it. Yeah? Yeah. Set down. Good zoom. Good zoom. Definitely at the nodes and at the base. Okay. We'll get the base first. Zoom there, Dave. Tiny sponge down there. It is tiny. It's so small. It might bounce a bit. This does look a bit similar to the one we did collect, but the tissue seems a little more red. <gasps> Do you come in the back, sea pig? Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. Love a sea pig in the background? Yeah. So this coral is branching internodally. Some branches very close to the nodes and some not as close. You can see the sclerites on the bodies of the polyps. So those are those little white hairs that you're seeing. And this is a really good example of looking at octocoral polyps. They have eight tentacles each. And those tentacles are pinnate, meaning they have those little side fuzzy branches on their tentacles. And all octocorals have that. I'm getting distracted by the sea pig. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. Keep so go for it. pig. <laughs> go for blab. <laughs> It's just doing its little, little thing, cleaning up the seafloor. Mm -hmm. Who else will do it? All right. Yeah, that was a great look. now. Can we make a 20 meter move? Zero, six, zero. We're about 150 meters from waypoint four. Is that a blob? Oh yeah, I think it might be an urchin. Pancake urchin. Go for Blob, Dave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Always. 
That's a really pretty color. Yeah, uh, these ones are always fun to look at. So this is Tromicosoma, a type of pancake urchin. Are you saying pancake? Pancake. Oh, just checking. Yep. <laughs> Uh, so they were called pancakes because uh, when they were first collected, their test is really thin, and so when they were brought up to the surface, they kind of flattened out. They're not super voluminous either, uh, even at depth, but they definitely got more volume than the original type specimens. Uh, what I love about them is they have these little hoofs on the ends of their spines mm. that they use for walking across sediment. You see those little white hoops? They're such fashionable shoes. <laughs> good here? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Come on, Dave. Yeah, I think we can go straight from four to five, waypoint four to waypoint five. All right. Looks like we'll be descending, huh? If I'm reading those contours right. Uh, yeah. I mean, after like after a little bit of a even area, then we'll, we'll see how these contours match up. Yeah, this data is kind of weird looking. Yeah. So I'm not sure if I trust it 100%. Yeah, point point nothing faster than point three. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're going to keep with our 20 meter steps. See, that yeah. seems to work out pretty well for us. Good. Bridge now. Can we have another 20 meter move? Zero, six, zero. Can we zoom out and see how far we've come so far on this watch? Oh, absolutely. Showing a lot of heave. Cool. And we're looking at the map here on satellite feed three, which you can also view in quad view. So that was their last sample. I think we started about here, this jog. So we've gone 420 meters. Okay. It's an interesting quarter mile. That was one of my events in high school track. I bet you didn't see any Dumbo octopus. <laughs> <laughs> I moved a little faster. Got any questions coming in? Um, let's see. Here's a question. Do we have any magnets or metal detectors on the ROVs? 
We use magnets to keep on certain tools, just for like uh, like knives or we did have it. Well, yeah, there's a magnet on the scoop, but that came off. <laughs> or the scoop popped off. But, uh, I think a magnetic device was used when they were looking for fragments of a meteorite. Oh, the yeah. Pacific oh, yeah. Northwest. Yeah. But that's is one of the compasses magnetic too. Well, we our main compass is a fiber fiber optic ring laser gyro. And then is the uh, the other up, the other up compass up? is a uses a micro machines. Uh, you know. Yeah. Nope. Nope. No, magnet. no magnetic compass. So we have had magnetometers on here. Okay. I haven't had. I don't think we had one for a while. What about a scope camera to film in like d crevices and whatnot? A uh, what camera? Scope camera. Scope. Oh, like a <coughs> like to look at microscopic stuff. I think it's uh, the question is referring more to to filming in places that are more difficult to get to, like under crevices and holes. Yeah. Um, hmm. Oh, yeah, something that could be had, extended. Huh. Yeah, yeah, we've had uh, like the, we have the digital still camera up front. We've had ones with with handles on them that we can pick up. Huh. Yeah, we can pick them up and oh, look okay. under things with that. Um, Yeah, they d they sometimes do the same thing with a magnetometer. That, uh, I guess no, like a tilt meter. They can get the angle of the rocks and stuff. Like, uh, that's you see that if you're doing like the, the in the Hess Deep, like where there's dikes, you want to get the, the slant angles of the rocks. Okay. They might be talking about uh, uh, an extendable camera, like a like a yeah. an arthroscopy, uh, yeah, mm. fiber optic camera. Let's check out that coral. Okay, that sounds like another tangle hazard. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, we've had some really serious tangle hazards. <laughs> Remember the box of cables, fishing <laughs> line. <laughs> Well, I mean that's yeah. yeah. I mean actual like science experiments oh, scientific, that, scientific that have a bunch of cables and stuff associated, and trying to keep them from getting all tangled up can be a a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the most lines I've seen on the f on a dive was the wreck of the Coast Trader off of the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Oh, yeah. Right near the U U.S. Canadian border, um, fishing l nets had been yeah. snagged all over it. Yeah, wrecks are kind of notorious for catching fishing gear. Um, mm. That makes them more treacherous than. Yeah. Megan, what are we looking at here? This is a bamboo coral. It's an unbranched bamboo. So this one has looks like long intertentacular spines. So those are the spines that are coming up between the tentacles. Jamie, you'd make a really good data logger. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Everything I'm writing, I see double. It's like, oh, she's taking notes too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I uh, identify some of the highlights for video production end. Mm -hmm. Um, so luckily I don't have to spell everything as correctly. <laughs> <laughs> my job's not quite as hard. I try my best. I usually look at the way you spell it. <laughs> and then I know, I got to notice that. Like, oh, oh gosh, so much pressure. Lobster. So oh, shit. where? Oh, that's a long arm. Oh, there. It's so cute. Hmm. It's found a really wonderful place to hang out. So this is a Europtychus squat lobster hanging out in a bamboo coral. So unbranched Caratoicididae. So corals are right, animals, but also colonies, correct? Correct, yeah. All corals are animals, but a not bunch of all animals. corals live mm -hmm. in colonies. There are single polyp corals. But 
if we were to look at that specimen, we would identify that as one animal, despite it being multiple polyps? Right, yeah, we just call it, it's one colony. Um, so if I were to count it, it would count as one individual. Mm -hmm. No one's gonna count all the polyps, that, <laughs> that would be silly. <laughs> And someone has a question about corals and whether they have anything resembling a nervous system. Um, the polyps do communicate with one another, uh, but they don't have a nervous system like you would expect in, say, a fish or a shark. Um, they don't have any sort of centralized nervous system. Okay. But they do react to stimuli and they can communicate with other polyps within their colony. Really and share resources. Umbalulas. 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 Zoom here, Dave. Polyps are so mesmerizing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a sea pen that has a long stalk with all the polyps concentrated at the top. Cool. Umbalulas can have all sorts of numbers of polyps. This one has seven? Yeah. But the one behind it, I think, has like four. Up. Oh, there's that one. Yep. So there is some debate whether or not, like, the number of polyps will be an indicator of species or not. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not convinced that they're different. I would yeah. assume that these two are the same and possibly of different ages. They look pretty similar. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on. Bridge nav. Can we make another 20 meter move, zero six zero? So can we explain a little bit about how we know the relative position of both ROVs to the ship at all times? Sure, so uh, we have USBL beacons on both vehicles. Um, those beacons send a sound and the ship is listening for that sound. And basically the time it takes for that sound to travel to the ship will tell us how deep the vehicles are and where it's located. That, that's the short, short version. <laughs> yeah. There's a bunch of math involved yeah. in, in actually triangulating exactly where they are, and that's how the USBL, the ultra short baseline, uh, begins work. So basically, the ultra short means that there, there are these little heads inside the beacons that are really close together. That's the short part, and that's what's being used to triangulate their position. So there is a, a transducer on the bottom of the ship that we actually lower down through a moon pool before each dive. And that's what's listening for the beacons. And another question is asking about why is Argus um, not exactly where Hercules is? And um, I think that has to do with the thrusters, is that correct? So Argus doesn't have um, the ability to really move about the seafloor in the same way Hercules does. So Hercules can basically go any direction it wants to go within the length of its tether. So Jay can make her go anywhere and check out anything we want to see about within 30 meters, our area. 30 meters of scope. About 30 meters, okay. 20 to 30. 
and Shrimp. my job is to make Argus go wherever we want to go by calling in moves with the bridge. But that, that travel time takes a little bit longer because we have so much wire out. So any move with the ship won't be felt on the seafloor for uh, a short period of time. So there is a delay in our movements. That's why I need to like stay a step ahead of the game and get us moving before we want to move on. That way we're not sitting and waiting for Argus to get moving before we can go see new stuff. All while knowing everything there is to know about corals. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, that, the coral knowledge is secondary <laughs> to, to the actually getting us going where we need to go. So I'm basically watching um, where the ship is going. Uh, the bridge has their DP screen, which shows where the ship is and where the ship will be. And when those two match up, I know that our move is complete and I can call in another move, or if we are setting up to sample, we'll just stay on station. The bridge knows that unless I ask them to go somewhere, we should just hold position. And the bridge can watch our high pack screen. So any points I drop or things like that, they can uh, see where we are and what we're doing on the seafloor. Bridge now. Can we make a twenty meter move zero six zero? Ooh. Yeah. Jake sees it. Yeah, oh. Nancy, I wanna get over there. <laughs> oh yeah, we're a little stretched out, aren't we? Yeah, yeah big time. <laughs> I think that's a percentage sea star. So they are a sea star that can actually actively filter feed. It sticks its arms up into the water column and has these little sticky pads on the arms that can capture food items and bring it back down to the mouth, which is on the underside of the organism. So he's like combination filter feeder predator. Yeah. You can get a zoom there. Okay. So this one's in its feeding posture. As you can see, the arms are up in the water waiting for stuff to come on by. There's a rock in the distance, probably way too big, but let's see, it's just above the screen still. Yeah, it's gonna be too big. Just looking at that guy. Yeah, that's huge. That's a huge rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it is a nice looking one. Mm -hmm. Our starboard boxes have space for one small to maybe medium-sized rock. Okay. Lot. Starboard D. D. So what is that up there? It's a blob. Yeah. Yeah, a blob. Blob. It's probably a Chrysogorgia. Oh no, the other blob over there. The other, other blob. Other blob. <laughs> up in the is top it, left. Yeah, top left. Is it just a rock? A rock. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's a rock. That's the big, That's big the rock. That's the big rock. Yeah. <laughs> I got, it fooled me too. I thought maybe it was yeah. some critter. Yeah, they, that would have been impressive. Like yeah, and the purple glow. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> like, oh. That would be the biggest sea cucumber ever. 
Amber is coming on watch after this, so maybe we can let her pick her own rock. I don't want to pick <laughs> something that she might not want. Yeah, there's something in that little crevice. Yeah, Another there's blob. a purple blob. Yeah. yeah. This is actually a blob. Go for blob. Go for blob, Dave. It's got a living in a cave. It's probably a hymenaster, one of those slime stars. They seem to like these little, hmm. like vertical areas on the rocks. Go for blob. Yep, that's what it is. He's got a nice little hole right there. Just Perfect size out. for a slime star. Cool color. Yeah, it's much darker than the one we recently posted a video of, which is more of like a light pink. Oh yeah, they, they've slime ranged star. in color. We've seen like ones that are almost white, some ones that are really deep purple. All right. What? Let's keep on trucking. Go away, float. <laughs> It's a bit of Argus motion. Oh, is that a, see that brown bit? That might be a C pen. Down low? Yeah. Because that's what it looked like when I saw it last time. I, re I think it's a rock pen. Rock pen? Yeah. Oh. It's a sample material. I think I summoned it. I wrote collect me next to my drawing. Of <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I should make a drawing so that the next watch can find it. Let's see what we got. Can we slurp this one or? Yeah, I think a slurp would probably work. Yeah, should work. All right, flush jar five. I'm gonna get a good zoom first. Yeah. Yeah, that looks like the same one. Nice. Yep, same one. It's pretty dense polyps. Yeah, nice. We got it. <laughs> wow. Found it. So this might be something like Anthoptylum. But usually those ones like <coughs> have sort of a back bend curve. Ready to come wide? Yeah. All right. Yeah, Steve was saying earlier, maybe uh, Calibolemnon. Uh, Copobolemnon. Calibolemnon. <laughs> Calibolemnon. Yeah. Or Calibolemnon. Yep. Yeah, there's Calibolemnon, there's Copobolemnon. <laughs> there's just a lot of really funny names for the sea pens. Uh, I'll pull that one up for you. Uh, Yeah, usually right. the Kelly Volumnons are shallower living, if I remember correctly. 30%? Uh, just might have to nudge that peduncle. I think got it can. I got it. All right. Let's see. Get in there. There yes. It's in. Whole thing. Oh, yeah, look. 
So the base is called the peduncle? Yeah. It's rather large. Peduncle. What a good name. <laughs> <laughs> Nine 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 nine. Almost to one hundred. What do we get when we go to one hundred? <laughs> I almost got spelling right. I had an extra L. Calibalemnon, symmetricum. But see, this is really shallow. Normally you see them yeah. like above a thousand meters. So yeah, if this is really Calibalemnon, that's really interesting. So I would just a species question mark. Gotcha. Is that something? Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> Going straight for it. <laughs> My descriptive uh, powers <laughs> left a little something. <laughs> it's something. It's certainly something. Uh, Probably a chrysogorgia. Yeah, puffy. Yep. Delicate. See, now you're starting to get the hang of this uh, chrysogorgia identification. It looks really mm. fuzzy from far yeah. away, Pretty and then it just keeps getting much. closer, and it never really resolves into anything. <laughs> This might be Chrysogorgia stellata. Very bushy. Very small and bushy. All right. A little squat, squat lobster, lobster in there. Yep. All right, come on. Bridge now. Can we make a 30 meter move, zero, 060? Zero? Megan, someone wants to know what 060 six zero means. Um, so that's a bearing. So we always give the bridge a distance and a bearing and a uh, speed to go at. So I don't always tell the bridge which speed we want to go. Basically, we've established that we'll tell a speed and we'll keep at that same speed unless told otherwise. Um, but the bearing is basically on a compass. North is zero, and then it's 360 degrees around that circle. And so 060 is off to the northeast. Thank you. So yeah, we've been basically traveling on the same bearing for most of the watch. Uh, I started at 070 um, and then just sort of scooted us a little bit more northeast <laughs> to hit our waypoint four, which we are almost on top of. Northeast works really nicely because the ship is heading into the wind, so the thrusters are more efficient than other directions. Yeah, so the, the ship, they're heading, so the direction they're pointing in is uh, 070. So we're not moving that much off that heading, so the ship is just basically going straight ahead. So hello to the AP Bio class tuning in. Um, and to answer your question, we are going to be back in the Pacific or Mo Islands Marine National Monument area. Um, this season, we'll be going more towards Johnson Atoll, um, which is how far from where we are now? You're not on SPL. I'd have to double check. It's about 800 miles to nautical miles to uh, Honolulu from here. So Johnston might be uh, six, maybe? Let me pull up. So it's within, within the monument, but it's a different Can I reset your DVL? Yep. 
Go right, it's a different unit of the Pacific it's Remote Islands uh, rem Marine National Monument. And we do have a map of all of our 2022 expedition targets um, on our expedition page online. Um, and then whether we return to Kingman and Palmyra in future years, who knows? It's about 600, a little over 600 nautical miles northwest. AP Bio was one of my favorite classes. Mine too. I loved like learning about the PCR machine. We did this like whole experiment uh, with yeast it, and uh, basically we all got to design our own experiments and test our hypotheses and that was the first time I ever wrote an official scientific paper like not something publishable but <laughs> you know using publications trying to follow that same format and and do it as you would do um, as a published scientist so that was really great experience to be able to like actually learn what I would be doing later in life, um, writing scientific papers. Fish. So for that AP bio class, Johnston Atoll should be an interesting, very interesting area for sponges, deep sea sponges. We've seen oh, lots around there. Uh, the Okeanos recorded the um, forest of the weird video that's been <laughs> watched quite a bit. We saw lots of, um, in 2019 on Nautilus, we were exploring deep off of the southwest side of Johnston, and so lots of these large polyopagon sponges. Oh yeah, they, those polyopagons can get leaves. really large. Yeah. Though I really love the ET sponge, the uh -huh. Vena Magnifica. The head of the sponge is a stock sponge, and it's got this like this head that looks like the head of ET, so <laughs> everybody would lovingly call it the uh, ET sponge, and it was only recently fully described and given a scientific name, which means magnificent alien. Oh. So that's Avena magnifica. All right, come back with. Is this a halosaur? It is a halosaur. Yes. I really like seeing those sponges though. But it was particularly fun in the forest of the weird because they were looking at you, you know? Mm -hmm. They're like, ooh. <laughs> it's like you're you're looking at the sponges and they're looking right back. So to answer the question of how long we spend out here, um, the cruises are varying length, but I would say on average it's two to four or five weeks, more closely to two or three weeks each, um, all depending on how far we need to go and what we need to do when we get to our site. Another question is if some of these animals are hundreds, perhaps thousands of years old, what explains how clean they are? And is this because of the associates that live around them? Not on SPL, Megan. Yeah, so the, the animals, um, they are self-cleaning. They want to keep themselves clean. Let's zoom here, Dave. Um, associates, like uh, snake stars, can assist the animals in, in keeping sediment and other detritus off them. So absolutely, they receive help and they, they work pretty hard to keep themselves hmm. looking beautiful. So a healthy, healthy, animal, healthy animal won't What's have any sort of detritus on it. Oh, there's a snail on that thing. This is strange. What is oh, yeah. this? So this is, yeah, this is a sponge. But multiple uh, stalks. Um, the sponge isn't doing well, but it's definitely home to uh, many cool things. It would be really neat if we could collect that snail. That would be neat. Uh, mm -hmm. See on the under, underside of the stock, you think you can get the suction in there? 
underside. You could dry. There? <laughs> the one oh, that. there? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. It's really hard to collect deep sea snails. We don't know them very well. Um, you don't see them very often. Keep in mind, Dave, we might have to get closer. What about snipping the yeah, whole sponge? Can we, yeah, can we do that? Um, we could try. Take the snail with it. Would it stay on? I, I don't know. I think it might, like, leave. Yeah. Also, trying to get the manip in there. Yeah. yeah. It's a tough spot. That's true. There's no way it'd fit in there. Yeah. I think the suction might be able to fit. Our best bet. And if the sponge gets stuck, we could maybe uh, deposit it. And, uh, sample jar six? Yes. We came in with only one bio sample to this watch, yeah. and now we've, we've loaded up. We're leaving <laughs> almost all of the slurps. One jar. <laughs> uh, what kind of snail is this that we're hoping to get? I know it's a snail. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Even better. I hope it's acrobatic. <laughs> no, it's not. It's I not know, a Gaza Daedala. Oh, so you know, you can hope. You can dream. If it is, you're not going to get it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Zoom in, it or. Hmm. It's a tricky position. Are you ready for it juice? Is. Yep. Is that, that's the right jar? Yep, right jar, jar six. Jar six. I got 30% suction. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there oh. Right in the hole. Unbelievable. <laughs> Very quick. Perfect. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> The legend returns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it in there? Uh, it looks like a lot of sediment. I can. See, so I thought I might have saw it go in. I think I there it is. Yeah. Yep. Wow. All right. <laughs> that was Very too nice. easy. Too easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's find something that harder. Was great. <laughs> <laughs> Just popped right off. Sample 100. Yep. Snail. Gastropoda. Have, so we've used the slurp jars? There's one it? slurp jar left. One left. Should we leave that for the next watch? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll think about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Depends what we find. We're making the most of what may be our final watch of the expedition. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're lots of great it. samples, great rocks, great biological lots samples. Of, yeah, so many weird bios. Yeah, I'm Love so it. stoked to see them in the lab. So many weird biologies. The weirder, the better. <laughs> and a lot of ripples. Mm hmm. So what evidence, if any, of um, human impact can we have we seen on the dives down this deep? Um, I haven't have seen, seen any. Trash? I, I haven't seen so. any trash, no. which is actually surprising. Um, I'm glad we I'm haven't glad, seen any. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, sometimes we see a bit of trash. Yeah, we're in an area, you know, the uh, north equatorial countercurrent is flowing pretty, pretty strong to the east on uh, at the surface so that would tend to take any surface objects away they wouldn't gather up here like they do in the garbage patches but yeah nothing you know dropped from ships or Where was it? Uh, was it near on the slopes of Palmyra that we that one of the watches had uh, saw some box of? Oh yeah. Old. That's early in the expedition. Yeah. First dive maybe. Oh yeah.
be interesting to see if microplastics are found in any of the uh, animals that we collect. But I don't know if anybody's looking for that. They just recently found them in human blood, didn't they? I was about to mention that. I like I've did been not seeing a lot that. of articles yeah. of microplastics found in human blood for the first time. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Yeah. So Steve's reminding us that slurps can be doubled up as long as the sample in the jar is not particularly fragile. Oh, okay. Oh. I'm getting to the end of the my leash. I don't know how fragile that snail is. Oh, yeah. we? um, we're going zero six zero, so I guess you can just like meander on back. <coughs> Yeah, um, there was a paper published uh, describing a new amphipod discovered in the Marianas Trench, and microplastics was found mm. in the oh. amphipod, and its species name got named after the oh. plastic that was found <laughs> in its gut. Nodules down here, maybe? That's so depressing. Yeah. Uh, it does not look like there's nodules down here. I think that's just like part of the Broken rock. Broken rocks. Kind of Covered in sediment, maybe? Yeah. Or is it pebbles? What do nodules look like? Get it. So the nodules that Bob is looking for, um, they're kind of just like these large like fields. So we would see them in valleys of the seamount. And there would be, you know, hundreds of golf ball sized little tiny brown manganese covered rocks. That's an interesting collection though. Yeah. Down there. But I think it all is attached. Oh, uh, that's like cement. S and I think that's just the texture that makes it look like individual it's little. It's been scoured by the currents. But we could try to, I mean, the scoops in the well. starboard. We could try using the I manipulator arm to see if they're see movable. See if they're loose. Yeah. yeah, they look pretty. That does look pretty solid. Yeah. This is a nice poke it, Bob? Of <laughs> what are we doing? Poking the, poking the poking the pebbles. The, the nine little <laughs> pebbles, the pebbles. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So they found microplastics in 17 of the 22 study participants. Jeez. Are you just poking down in here somewhere? Yeah, yeah, just seeing if they're loose at all. I doubt it. Zoom in. Oh. oh. Huh. Wow. OK, well, maybe. I, it could maybe. be an interesting collect. Uh, if we think you could get that scoop. Do you think you could get the scoop and then dump them in Harbor? Oh, D? man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. While you, <laughs> while you stand on your head and whistle. That should take us to the turnover <laughs> anyway. The cameras. I thought I saw some nodules. I Can we you hold did. position, please? Yeah. So maybe Jake should do it since he's the one who saw them. Sample. Do it, Jake? Would no, be legendary. <laughs> <laughs> Steve says the forward box for the nodules no. is probably fine. Yeah, um, bamboo coral in A and black coral in B. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Let's see. Okay, yeah. No, he wants them in the starboard box. Starboard B is... Starboard B? Starboard D. D. Delta. Delta. I'm back. Where did these come from, I wonder? 
Yeah, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> get a better. Get a better grip. Mark four. <laughs> Mark. Mark. Steve put something in the chat. Okay. Yeah, these are angular yeah. and variant size, so it could be crusty rubble, but uh, but yeah. still interesting, I think. To Once I get these rocks back to GSO, I'll be able to cut them open and see what's on the inside. Kind of hard to get the scoop to go yeah. under them. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. That's good. plenty. Yep. Right. Looks right. good. Forward. Starboard Delta, if you can pour him in there. Oh, are we going to oh, start yeah. side? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, keep, just keep making it more challenging. Just <laughs> make it, it a test. Up. <laughs> just don't hit the blue button. <laughs> uh. All right. Sample. Jeez. Yeah, so where is Delta? Delta. All right, I gotta come back. Come out yeah. more. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> is that heavy? We're, I think we're at the end of the. I'm maybe getting tugged. Yeah. Yeah, I stopped our move, uh, but still getting yeah, a little swing. Oh, swing. I see. So just the vehicle getting tugged a bit. If you can't make it to D, um, I would say it's fine to put them in one of the other boxes because these are really small compared yeah, to the other boxes. We'll be able to tell them apart. That's true. If you put them in E, I think it would be fine. Yeah, just drop the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just put the scoop yeah, in Yeah, you can put the scoop in E. It's got to go in there anyway. Yeah, yeah. so. All right. <laughs> I hope they don't plan on using it again. Well, oh, no. That's <laughs> a problem for another time. <laughs> another watch is problem. Like another watch is problem. That's not nice, guys. Uh, <laughs> all right. Perfect. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We need this. Sample scoop. coming in. <laughs> well done. Oh, boy. Ready for dive. Salvo. So, Corley, what kind of uh, process can you do in the wet lab before you go back to shore? How much can you determine from the rocks? Um, not that much. I can scrape them, which is what I've been doing. So I like to scrape them before they get shipped back because the ferromanganese crusts are really friable, so they break really easily. Nope. And so it's hard to know <laughs> what the top surface is. So for my research, I'm scraping all of the less than it. one millimeter of ferromanganese crust um, before we ship them back. Uh, but that's really it. We can break them open, um, but then again, some of the crust will fall off and uh, see what's on the inside or how thick the crust is. But um, to do a lot of the work that I'm doing, it doesn't make sense to do it here. It makes more sense to just do it back at, yeah. at uh, home. Kind of unusual that they would just pile up that boulder. Don't see them anywhere else. Okay. We have a question. Is the lamp by the slurp hose new? Lamp? Yeah. Um, uh, not sure. Is yeah. the porch light. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We oh. added three new, or. Oh, someone's paying attention. Yeah, three additional lights. Yes. Down low. <laughs> 
very astute observation viewers. this guy? This is hmm. it's a rock. It's a dusty rock. Looks like an eye. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does look like an eye. Could you imagine if it was another Dumbo octopus? Oh, that'd be Stop. amazing. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. I just tend to see them <laughs> a lot. Bridge now. Can we make a 40 meter move? Zero six zero. So this dive will continue till 2000 local. Um, eight, more, eight more hours. And uh, then we'll see uh, about tomorrow, but it's, we're, it would be quite a distance to go to another good seamount for exploration. And it looks like the wind and waves are going to be building. Oh, so. Oh, nice. Oh, a nice uh, big diplocanthopoma. Wow. <laughs> Diplocanthopoma. Yeah, I'm gonna spell that one. Diplocanthopoma. So, uh, these Giraffe? are. Oh, just kidding. Oh, sorry. Zoom in. In the family Bythidae. They're actually live bearers. Oh. Yeah. Whoa. Way to identify them is they have that sort of slope to their head, and you see the lateral line is disjointed. There's that first part near the head. That's up high, and then it continues on along the midline of the fish. That's so cool. It almost looks like it has whiskers. Yeah. Yeah, they have like those little barbels. Yeah. Hmm. Kind of for feeling. Got two freckles. That's radical. He looks very old. But wise. <laughs> yes, wise and old. <laughs> yeah, it might be. Uh, we did see a couple of these on our previous dive that were close together. And uh, Ken Zulak said that they might be um, like a mated pair. Hmm. Oh. So <laughs> this one might be looking for. Boy, we're taking a lot of. Bumps here. Yeah, it's a big, big tension. And yeah, normally, when you see yeah. them, they're they're solitary. Yeah. So it's pretty rare to see a couple in the same area. This one's definitely a, a big individual. And fun fact about fishes: the uh, the older, the larger the fish is, the it's exponentially uh, increased in egg clutch size. So. Mm -hmm. They'll Ooh. lay a lot more eggs than a smaller fish. Classic that, allometry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the wind is only 14 knots out there, but... The swell is definitely building. I can feel mm. it. And we're seeing it on the tension meter. Yeah. Wind speed right now looks like 13 knots. Yeah, we're coming up in depth, but our tension's coming up on the cable. What's it coming up to? Well, we got one spike to like 13,500. 13, okay.
What else we have in E? A larger rock, right? That's starboard E. Starboard E, yeah. With one medium scoop. rock, one larger rock, small oh. nodules, and our scooper. <laughs> that was our first rock, right? Yep. So the sensors that measure things like water temperature and, and what have you, are those on the ROV? Yep. Or? Yep, on HERC. We have a Seabird CTD. CTD and a we have Optode. A Optode oxygen sensor. Uh, There's a temperature probe that we're not, Oh yeah. it's not deployable in its current you can pick it up with the arm and poke it into things that are... Can you zoom out a bit, Nav, on the high back so we can see waypoint 6 as well? It's so waypoint 5, we're actually dipping down about 100 meters, and then we'd be rising up 300 meters almost to uh, waypoint 6. It's about five minutes to the hour here. So as we begin to slowly transition to the new watch, I think I speak on behalf of everyone from eight to 12 when I say, thank you for being with us for this journey. In thanks. case this is our last watch. Um, yeah, thanks for the questions. Great questions, great participation, great things to see. That was probably my favorite watch. This one? Yeah, this one. Lots of cool stuff. Yeah. The jump octopus was cool. I know, that was my favorite thing. And the other one was really, the, the other one from the other yeah, day was really cute too. Tiny yeah. one. Two little Dumbo. Octopus. When will the website have some of those videos up, do you think? Like, how long does it usually take? That's a good question. Um, I want to share it with everyone, all my hopefully friends. Hopefully, soon. <laughs> I will, I will <laughs> check in and see how fast we can get it up. But cool. it does take a few days uh, to get the video and the data back to shore and then edited and produced. Okay, okay. But Thank you. I will let you know as soon as it's available. Will do. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Jamie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Thank you. No, it was terrible. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> well, there's nothing we could do about it now. <laughs> Add it to the list of things. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's new. It's okay. If you ignore it, it'll go away. I hope. Yes, yes. <laughs> Maybe this one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is there, what? Oh, I didn't even know that existed. Every time. Are we all here? Yes, hello, hello. Yeah, Howdy. I think we are. We are just doing a watch change. What heading should we, um, well, you gotta catch up, girl. You're behind. I'm tilted this way just to give you a sense of where you are. I'll, I'll follow you around. We might actually do some zero five fives. We'll see. Um. We're gonna talk to science <laughs> here in a second, see what science wants to do. Also, pilots, we should probably talk about this questionable uh, <laughs> terrain. Terrain we're about to <laughs> zoom right into. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Great talk. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that there is a uh, rock surface. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're trying to get over to waypoint five. And how pilots and nav, do you, would you prefer not to go directly towards it and rather go kind of down the slope perpendicular to it and then scoot north? Or what, what would be... Most preferable. I don't have a preference okay. necessarily. Cool. I don't know. Um, Let's go directly think, then. Yeah, I I don't have a preference. I think that you know a little bit of side hill is going to mean that we can s see the bottom more. Okay. Um, and so I'll try and sort uh, of head down sideways and back down as much as I can, but. Okay. Actually, it's not. We're gonna, we're yeah. actually changing plans. Okay. So. We're going to skip waypoint five. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. And go directly to six. Um, taking whatever route is most interesting and comfortable for the ROVs. So perhaps going directly looks a little bit strange. Maybe we can go a little bit um, more east rather than northeast and then over. Yeah, I'm willing to give that a shot. I think the more time we spend sort of going along a contour, yeah. the better we're going to be. Like, we could just try and get all the downhill done in one shot. You know, we won't see the bottom really that much, but we'll get it over and done with. And then we'll have like a, we'll have like a long transect on a uh, contour, maybe. Um, we could come up to this contour and then just follow it all the way. I'm actually having like so some trouble much. trying to tell what's up and what's down in that map. It is, yeah, very challenging. Uh, <laughs> so this is a local peak right here. Okay. So this is going to be thought. just under it. Uh -huh. So I think that this is down. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm uh, saying. That's what and I was saying too. This is up again. Oh, okay. Maybe that's great. or maybe not. Let's <laughs> zoom out. Sure. <laughs> yeah, we could we could go to the. Um, yeah. That first w white. I see what's going on. So that's all yeah. up, and then okay. you you bottom or you top out here again, and then that I think is down from there. Okay. Um. I'm I'm good with that. So let yeah. let's go down to the. Let's see. Zoom back in. Yeah. The. Um. Yeah. The first or the second white contour from where we are, and then we can go along that contour. And then go straight up vertically towards waypoint six. Yeah, that sounds like that, that sounds great. Okay. And we don't need to like travel the full curve. We can yeah, like, just like if we're across. going yeah, we can yeah, be yeah. pretty direct once we go down. Okay, so I think I'll start us at a zero six five because that'll bring us right to here, and then we can cool scoot over and pop back up. Okay, that sounds great. Roger. Nice. Zero six five, Raj. 
I like this plan. Bridge, no? Yeah. It's a nice plan. It's a good plan. Great plan, even. With <laughs> our unusual map. Could we stay yeah, five zero meters bearing kind of zero really six five? <sighs> Thank you. We're doing five zero zero six five. Okay, sounds good. Roger. Dodger. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ladies settled and ready to begin these introductions on our final watch? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, let's well, go for it. This is a special one, right? Because yeah. uh, this is the last 12 to 4 watch on this expedition. And so I want to say hello, world. And um, I am Brandy Jones, the Science Communication Fellow for the 12 to 4 watch. And it has been an honor. Uh, full of joy and a moment to truly learn from some exceptional human beings and I feel blessed to be surrounded by you all and so if you're Don't tuning in to 12 to 4 <laughs> you're in for a treat to learn lots from our pilots and scientists and video engineers um, and our navigator so I'm gonna pass it on over so I don't get all <laughs> Extra. <laughs> oh boy. Whoa. Let's not start the waterworks just yet. Let's save that for uh, yes. okay. four o'clock. Save the water for sampling. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I like that. There's some E DNA on our salty, salty tears. That was a nice little anemone. Yeah. Hello everyone. I am Thanks Amber Saravalo from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And yeah, this will be our last 12 to four watch. I will be uh, leaving right after this with some lovely, lovely rocks to go make thin sections of and then crush out for dating to see if we can actually get a good date on any of these seamounts. So I'm very excited, but also a little bit sad to be leaving this wonderful watch to you. Mm -hmm. It's quite a good one. We've had some really good times. Now I'll hand it over to our watch lead. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Megan Lubetkin, and I'm the watch lead for the 12 to 4. And yeah, I I could echo everything that Brandy was saying, and I'm just really grateful to have sat this cruise with this team here and really excited for the next four hours. Hopefully we see lots of interesting rocks and biology and get some samples. Hopefully some, some sparse branches. <laughs> yeah, some spri <laughs> sparse branches. <laughs> Maybe some nodules if we're lucky. Hello everyone, I'm Mary Dury and I'm the data logger. It's been a lot of fun being the data logger for 12 to 4. And I'm looking forward to getting back and looking at these bamboo corals we've collected though. <laughs> Uh, hello, I am Nia Beckler. I'm sitting nav. I don't know what all these folks are talking about. I'll be on 12 to 4 until we hit the dock. <laughs> so yes, but the ship on lives comms. on. <laughs> uh, we will be mapping. <laughs> and I will I will miss all of you alone in the data lab. It'll be a little <laughs> bit sadder. Maybe I'll come join you down there for a little bit. Please we'll do. <laughs> Herc? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about rocks and the caution tape on the deck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, the caution yes, tape. There's the <laughs> <laughs> there's caution tape on the deck? Yeah. Yes, there I is. I think they're probably painting. cleaning it. They're painting. Yeah, oh, nice. they're painting the Argus area. Nice. Gotcha. That'll be great. Um, I thought you did something with those rocks. I'm Gabby Inglis, and I'm sitting Herc. And what do you feel about us? <laughs> <laughs> yes, feel share like your feelings. You are all spectacular, and this is a really great watch. I am Kylie Pasternak. I am sitting Argus. Um, I have, in this very short trip uh, that felt very long, I have grown to love these humans on this watch. And um, 
you're pulling on me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get the shot, Gabby. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and I'm excited to see um, where all these people end up in their careers and in their mm -hmm. lives and um, could, like keep up with them and continue to support each other. Great. Um, hello and farewell in four hours. Uh, this is Ryan the Young, video engineer, and um, just a big ditto to everybody and what everybody said. It's been a great, 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 great time and with a great group of people. So thank you. Have you seen the movie Ghost, Ryan? Me? No. Yeah. Oh, there's big ditto energy. <laughs> big ditto energy. <laughs> I'm with it. Well said. <laughs> Oh, are we happy with these these big steps? Yeah. Okay. Right. Do we want to do bigger? Go big or go home. Sure. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> hold on. When we oh, said so this is the Why geologist, do you both, can actually. disregard our scientists. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. We can, can do. We can have the next like one. To bring up the whole Earth's <laughs> crust. Yeah, we can <laughs> do the next one bigger, and then you know, as we start going down, if we start losing the bottom for some reason, then we can slow down. We'll slow down. Okay, that sounds good. I mean, we're still pretty far off the slope, I think, if okay. the contours are correct, which which they haven't been yet. <laughs> We've learned our <laughs> is not true. <laughs> That's why we like to map our That own. reminds me, data logger, how many rocks have we collected thus far? Go for too many. <gasps> <gasps> there is no <laughs> such thing. Uh, um, let me count. Bridge, no? Oh, we did get some small nodules. Yeah, I think um, Scoop's in there with them. Yes. yes. Uh, could we step one zero zero meters bearing zero six five? Looks like eight. So far. Ooh. So do we Go have up. space for more, or we have one that? more starboard bio box? Okay. Do you still have forward bio boxes for Those both have biology? In there. So, oh. I mean, yes, we can. We, I just would not put a rock on top of them. No, <laughs> no. We we shall not crush our biology. This one is a bamboo coral. <gasps> so. Really? Is it a sparse brancher? Uh, I don't know. I haven't looked at that image. I haven't gone back. <gasps> There's looks like a couple bamboo corals in here. Nice. We still seem to be going a little bit upslope. The slope goes up into the uh, to the left. Interesting. I wonder if this uh, peak is just not quite where it looks like it is. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's actually a ridge, and that's actually going up a little bit. Completely different from the contours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we did not map this site directly before we dove uh, because we had existing data here. So, mm -hmm. and I'm, to be honest, not sure whose data we're looking at. Uh, it could be old Nautilus data. It could be from another ship and it could be, it? you know, a few years old also. So things could have shifted slash maybe we just didn't get great resolution okay, over this right. area. Yes, somebody uh, told me last night where the data came from and I know it's not ours, uh, but I'm not sure whose it is. I, we, we Before cruise, we pull a bunch of data out of the NCEI yeah. database, so it we may not even have like record of whose it is at this point. Like when you download all of it, it'll tell you, but then once you put it all in one surface, it's sort of like, here's your data. Is that a brittle star or Go is that zoom? a brisingid? Uh, or a sun star? star. Oh, yeah. look, it's normal. It's, normal. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen one of you. Hey, Normie. <laughs> Beautiful. Normcore. Okay, go on. Can I use bubble? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it would be interesting to see what this place looked like if we had mapped it and overlaid it with the map that we're looking at, since it has seemed quite different. This is quite the nice little rubble area. I want to rock, but they're too big. They're just too big. 
Yeah, it this like one is calling have, my name. It sounds like we don't have a ton of like space for no, big rocks, really right? No, we really don't. We do not. Oh, we've got an Umbalula. I oh, go for zoom. Where? Oh, oh we do. Good eyes. I was too busy staring at the rock. You would. He's <laughs> <laughs> darn And a shrimp. Oh, and a shrimp photo bombing again. And is that a little arthropod or something that's on the Umbalula? It looks like it's a sh the shrimp. Oh, and there's uh -huh. a Xenophyophor. Where's that? Oh, right in the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, cool. Okay, go wide. Yeah, what's up? Type of shrimp, Steve says, is a message Why? shrimp. Interesting. Like a missed. Hmm. A crinoid. These rubble areas with the sand ripples kind of remind me of those Zen gardens where you take the rake through the sand oh, around yeah. the rocks. Go for Zoom. Can see it. We should put a rake on Herc so we can do that one day. There was a rake on Herc at one point. Its name was Flo. <laughs> <laughs> you seem very attached to this. <laughs> Oh, there's another Zeno. Zeno. And another one. So yeah. two potentially right here with this crinoid. Okay, go wide. And that botryoidal texture on the rocks. <coughs> tilt secure. What's that? I said tilt secure if it pops okay, up right. Thank you. Another, Another tall crinoid. crinoid. I'm so happy to be back in the land of rocks. <laughs> Amber, someone from Arizona would like to ask you if you have any idea how old these seamounts are or if you are just... So that's a good question. I have to look and see what orientation this particular seamount is, if it's one of the uh, east-west trending ones or one of the north-south ones. We actually don't, I think, have any age data on this one yet. It also wasn't fully mapped. Um, but for this area as a whole, we're thinking Cretaceous in age, just based off of some other data that we have okay, from around on. Kingman Reef, Palmyra, and some other portions of the Line Islands as a whole. On Argus. <coughs> so I would oh, not you. be surprised if that is the age here too, but it could also be different. It could also be from an entirely different hotspot as well. There you have it. The geologist has spoken. Seeing a lot of comments about our team name, our watch team name. Did we ever come up with one? I know we had a temporary pillow basalts, but did we get a? <laughs> it oh. could be the umbalumbables. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I wouldn't say no to that. That does feel a brand for us. <laughs> okay, go wide. I think you can call this. I like with crinoid. Or or the Xeno team. Ooh. Oh, those little things are so cute. Oh. <laughs> Xenophyophores? Yeah. Wow. They also have a great name. Here you are at the Xenophyophores. Is that another Umbalula or is that something else stocked? Oh. oh where? It's, we went past it. Ah, okay. I think we're fine. <laughs> oh, I am loving this area. Yeah, these are really big. This is definitely, big boulders. definitely more into our lovely, lovely volcanic rocks. Very encrusted, but volcanic nonetheless. Oh, there's a really Ooh, big anemone Nice there. anemone. Wow. Let's get a zoom. I wonder if that's our Serianthus friend? It's or possible. No. That is huge. It, it is. is. 
one day I'd like to look back at this, these images okay, go for with there. the lasers and just measure the length of some of these tentacles. It wow. look, oh, it does look like maybe wow. a serianthus. Yeah. It's hard to tell without yeah. seeing the mouth. We'd have to see that mouth. It does what's, not want to show us. What's the yellow in the background? I think that's something else. Yeah. Uh, mm. How would you spell serianthus? Let me type C it. I cannot. C E R I A N T H U S. Yep. Oh, cool shot with Argus. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> really the flashlight <laughs> Nice. That is a nice shot. The ripples yeah. are really lovely. Wow. Got the ripples. You've got the anemone is large enough to see. You've oh, got yeah. the large blocks. I mean, look how it long really those is. tentacles are like. Yeah. And wow. that yellow thing's probably, I guess, an old base. I can't yeah. seem to get yeah. so, yeah. a shot of the mouth. Really living there anymore. What's that, Gad? I can't seem to get a shot of the mouth. I don't yeah. think this is a Syrian. Well, it it's angled downward, so yeah. I think it'll be hard. Yeah. Are one of its uh, tentacles cut off? I yeah, don't know. Take a look. What is do you, that part the of the shorter mouth ones you mean? Yeah, the there's one, one video. in the middle okay. here. That's sort of like oh. ends. They're really long. Look at this. Oh, this is a relicanthus. 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 Ooh, an ancient lineage. Over so says Steve. Million years old. Wow. wow. Whoa. Okay, go away. Not to say that this particular one is that old. <laughs> that would be quite something. <laughs> it's got tendrils like Gandalf, so it might be. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I was on the cusp of going, Gandalf the Grey. This is good. <laughs> that was my name once. I like that. I watch them a lot. <laughs> it's like my comfort movies. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys. I think I think the internet has spoken on a name. Let me see if I, I can do this. I feel like yeah. I don't. So do you guys remember Bodie McBoatface? Like we're not <laughs> the, we're not giving the internet the final word. Yeah, on but, that well, name. but <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's just hear this one out. Okay. Zeno. Oh, goodness. Megan, you want to try this one? This one is a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> I like Zeno Fio 12 to 4. Actually, that's pretty cute. That's pretty fun, yeah. Yeah, and that, that's something that we came up with, and Do then they remixed come it. Up a bit? So Just take, take a look at it. It was a collaboration me, with our viewers. You know what we never named? The Sea Star I made you. That's true. That Sea Star, sea star could be Can called Zeno Fio 12 to 4. <laughs> oh, I think that Bridge, is the right? remains of an old sponge. Yep. Could we hold position? Ooh, and a jelly. You are correct. Relicanthus. Nice. What's that? That's better. Ooh. Can we get this big block? Mm. You think we can get <laughs> it to float up? <laughs> this is um, a very large baked potato if we did get it. Oh my goodness. I think Oh there's a little crease oh, of gorgeous. Oh whoa, yes. I think we definitely need this one to come to the surface now. <laughs> Go for zoom. Look at it move. <gasps> oh, yeah. oh. Ooh. Ooh. these are nice. You can push in a little further. Now what type of these do you think Mary? The general be a chrysogorgid. Ah, so these are more chrysogorgids. Okay. Yeah. I don't have a more specific name. Yeah. Okay. This looks different, different than the ones we had seen before, from the most recent ones. And so, oh wow. Can we There's look at God. the ones sorry, to the you. left? Ooh. Oh. Uh, okay, great, thank you. I so didn't want to miss a all of the things here. Just yeah. the yellow trying to one get ahead. To the right and some whips. Can we get a zoom on any of these other ones or do we need to keep moving? Um, I might be able to get a little bit. Uh, so the ship isn't moving, and I think that I can get a little bit before we run out completely. Would pick your poison. You get one shot. Um, what about that whip? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's do the okay. whip. That's probably the easiest. Go for zoom. 
I think it's trying to be an Aritagorgia. <laughs> yeah, it does kind of look it's like it is. It's you true. can push in a little further. Do you have what you need? Uh, yeah. Yep. Oh, it has a squat lobster oh, on nice. it. Oh, nice. Oh, there is. Okay, yeah. I got to go. Good. Yep. Thank you. All right. Such lovely pillows. Do you agree that this is very pillowy or no? All of these I just... think so. Yeah. It's it's hard to tell because we were in some areas where the the layers Oh, yeah. I mean, look look ahead of yeah. us. Oh, that looks really pillowy. Yeah. That's this. Oh. This definitely this is looks beautiful volcanic and in Argus Did you get as, a well. as to how many um, plates we have left oh, yeah I see at least one Ooh, I'm gonna assume it's just the one because on one. the tie is broken you know yeah just the one okay you can come yeah. on Roger sorry it's okay. Just kept <laughs> giving you hey, things to look, look at. Look over here. <laughs> hey, look over there. <laughs> but what about? Do you remember this thing that nobody ever told you? <laughs> oh, just like engage iguana eyes, like. <laughs> yes. Oh, like chameleons, right? Yeah. With the like independently oh. swiveling eyes. Yeah. We've got another oh, yeah. little anemone. Oh my gosh! Oh, look what look is at that. that is oh, so cool. This crack. Oh, wow. Do we have the still cam? Oh, I'll With put it up for you. Uh, oh, whoa. Wow. That is a really neat little Is that thing. a ser no, a um, Chrysogorgia that's like moving yeah. off of another one? Or is it just I a long stock? That's just a long stock, OK. Oh, but wow. Oh, got some primnoids in here, too. Oh, this is nice. This is a beautiful cool. spot. Mm -hmm. Right? I would not have expected this crack to yeah. be a good area for, for nutrients. No, oh. me neither. It's kind of the opposite Maybe of what I would expect. The nutrients is literally going from There's the just like a concentration of flow through here. Yeah. 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 yeah, you're just getting tunneled through. Sorry, I need to make an adjustment here before I'm going to be able to hold anything steady. No worries. All good. And a crinoid back there. I wonder maybe? if there's maybe like there's just like a concentration What's of flow through here, one? and it's just really cranking. Yeah, oh, there's just, just a little teeny coral. weeny little Hard coral. Yes, yeah. so cute. And that. a brittle star. The little red one on the yeah. right. Yeah, we little could get a zoom. Baby octocoral. Um, can you push in a little more? Let's see, I'm all the way in. Okay, thanks. See and there's little, little tiny Christ gorgeous over here yeah. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This really is quite the, I guess, both gets the current going through and is kind yeah. of sheltered. Yeah. All in one go. That's nice. The Argus view is great. You can really see how big that that crack is relative to Herc. Nice. OK, I got the vehicle a little more stable here. We can't stay forever, but That's um, okay. is the white zoanthids? It kind of looks like that, but they're I don't feel like I've seen them that color before. I also agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a cool spot. It really is. Unfortunately, I think I have to scramble. That's OK. That's we got right. some great images. OK, awesome. That might be uh, an it's a OK, go one. wide. Raj. Oh. All the way back there. Oh, so I wasn't even looking at the stock wow. cam. I should have been. This is really oh, cool. Oh, it, 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 you had great shots left. anyway. Oh, We've nice. got some really good ones. So this area has some nice Interesting. nutrient oh, I'm, flow. I'm looking up zoanthids. They can be white. Okay. <laughs> I've seen Okay. Looking down into the abyss that is, Yeah, what, we're kind of coming off feet? Wow. 50 feet? the ledge of this Whoa. little local summit. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. The Seamount knew that this was our last watch. <laughs> we should be going up a few more features that are similar to this, so it might just get better. Ah, are we doing a backwards view? I kind of want to. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. The other side had some interesting... I things. felt like I had to let go before we were all ready. I'm going to um, change my heading just to see if I can get a cool shot. Maybe an okay, anemone or an urchin. Another whip coral. A whip and a tube for an anemone. Okay. 
so much diversity here. We shouldn't pop a Niskin here, should we? Oh, oh we that do have Niskins available, yeah, right? We, yeah. We have do you want to do that? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. It's a great idea. You ready, Kelly? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll get up on top here. Good to know that I can do more than just my rocks. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Niskins are actually one of the few things that yeah. we do and have left. Meredith says this was a great spot. Nice. And That's so did good. Steve. Good. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, uh, just going to take a second to settle out, and I'll get us racked back. Oh. Yeah, I think. Sponge. Okay. That Can might also a be a different switch type Switch to craft arm. Say again? Can I switch to the craft yep. arm view? Absolutely. Okay. okay. Okay, I do valve. Craft valve is on. Raj. Okay, I'm <laughs> just sure it is. <laughs> Raj. <laughs> um, so I need one of the ones three at the top, at the bottom, at the top. Six is all the way in the back. Is that true? Six, Six is all the way forward. Okay. Yeah. I will never get that right. I know. Mm -hmm. It's hard. So I guess I should go for the blue one. Wait, sure. one, two, three. Yeah, Orange. Whichever one. Just keep your eyes peeled. Yep. This is actually 102. Oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's 102. Oh. That means they got the 100 sample on the last watch. That's right. You guessed it right. Um, the samples do stay with Herc until we bring the ROVs back on deck at the end of the dive. That's it. Right, Roger. Skin was it. that? It's number four, right? Yeah. Four. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Scientists, okay. do you all have a um, paused and halted a book to recommend for graduate and students I, uh, on identifying? I do see that wrap. And sea, once we get out of this sea like, creatures? cool view, we'll, I'll take it out. Um, I don't okay. necessarily have any books of my own for exclusively deep sea creatures, but what I, I would use just say is um, this guy. well, if someone wanted to access that, not just on the ship. <laughs> the, <laughs> oh, really? That's what I was thinking they meant. Um, but the if you look up the NOAA Bethic Deep Sea Animal Guide, that's a really good one. Can you let I them use. know what NOAA stands for? National Oceanographic Oceanic and Atmospheric Ocean. Administration. Administration. Yeah. So this is just a website that has a nice image database that we use all the time to reference for making identifications. And so if you're watching along, you could also check it out and do your own identifying. What a cool yeah. spot. We use it quite a bit on these dives. Yeah, it's oceanexplorer.noaa.gov. Uh, we use the Okeanos Animal Guide. OK, all. I think it's time to split. Do you all want right. one last chrysogorgid zoom? Sure. Sure do. OK, go for zoom. Can we briefly let the audience know what a Niskin is and how it's used? Okay, go wide. 
And this skin is a Oops. water sampling uh, okay, bottle about <laughs> that we use <laughs> to collect water. And mostly on these cruises, we're doing that for eDNA analysis. So basically capturing a little um, water uh, DNA glimpse of who who's living in the area and uh, doing that without actually needing to collect a sample. Since just like people, these organisms release uh, mucus or tissue into the water. And so if we get a water sample, can you trace what might have been here? And what might have been here could be something that passed through like a fish or could be the corals. So it's a nice way to, to sample uh, the environment. Can you go back to engineer when you have a chance? That yeah. is one of the coolest things I've learned out here. About I just that. want to take a look at that sub bottom. Yeah. This is yeah. going to be a weird spot to. It's kind of it's magical. So it's like the. Like look at all the places your sub bottom is hitting. Mm -hmm. Black magic chemistry. Mm -hmm. Like there's like a 10 meter variation. Yeah. Just in that like little cone that you can Megan. see. So when they pull Crazy. on that cord yeah. to. Um, take the Niskin sample, that just releases those zip ties on the seals and seals the bottle up? Or does it do more than that? Yeah, there's there's a seal on, on the top and bottom of the bottle and it, it closes it shut. We have another shut. one of these. One of, one of these uh, anemones with the super long tentacles. Oh yeah. Ooh. Now Ooh. is this going to be Go a real acanthus? Uh, or it looks a This one might actually so. let us see its mouth which would be cool. Oh. I mean, this is so And just cool. put uh, an enemy for the highlight. And this is the one that's like millions of years old, right? Is it the same one? Uh, the we're lineage. not sure. It looks like it. But yeah, it's lineage. The, the lineage know. is yeah. over 500 million <laughs> years old, but the individual might be not that old. Okay, I see. You could colloquially refer to it as the Gandalf anemone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to keep them straight, you know. Wow. Yeah, I think I definitely would have put this as being where some of the highs are as opposed to us having just kind of passed. Yeah, this maybe things are I just think. shifted, the uh, projection. Still doesn't want to show his mouth here. Nope. Oh, okay. Huh, well, here we are. Oh, yeah, I can look at it in the still cam. Is that something you're interested in, watch lead? Well, I didn't catch the... Uh, still cam. Oh, sure, that'd be great. It is pretty dramatic in the still cam. I like that a lot. It's hard to fly off of just it, too, because it like doesn't update all that fast. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of like... It's like a lot of latency for flying. <laughs> oh, but this rock is so beautiful. Yeah, it is really nice. Someone on our audience would like to know, what are the stringy things? Oh, that looks pretty. It's okay. looks good. Those Go are what? just part of its tentacles, Thank which you. will be used for like food capture, since they kind of just hang out in the water column. Do they sting? They, they should have some hematocysts in them that would sting. Is that a tiny sponge? Oh, yeah. Where are you looking? Right on. Right up here. Oh, yes. It's, it's so very, tiny. Very tiny. I could only see it when it was had the backdrop of the, the ocean. Okay. Oh, that's so small. Oh. <laughs> I've been, I got to spin the other way. Yeah. I've been okay. getting into a habit of spinning <laughs> the incorrect way. Here. Ooh, we have a floating friend. Oh, 
Oh, hey, you again. <laughs> <laughs> Tentacles straight up waiting to catch. Oh, that's super cool. I think actually this is like some of the prop wash there. I wonder if like us going by just like oh, gives maybe. them a meal. Yeah. Probably. Like they're reaching up, trying to grab it all. A little feast. Yeah. Trying to reach that sponge. sponge. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Go for zoom. Oh, that is a oh, it's so really wee. <laughs> is it stocked? Uh, I think it might I be. Think I think from the I other view, ever. it was stocked. It had a little baby stock, so I think this is one of those tulipy ones. Maybe we call it sprouted. <laughs> sprouted. Can you go any tighter, video? Oh my oh. gosh, it's so little. Oh, and there's oh, a little amphipod, right? Oh, there is. You have an associate already. And a little <laughs> brittle star, I think. Maybe, a yeah. Precocious. <laughs> precocious. Oh my goodness. Industrious. Entrepreneurial. Yes, <laughs> it's starting it off early. The young and all those days. Bottry oil grapes. First one to make partner. Okay, go on. Right. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> nice. Oh, so many beautiful rocks. Yeah, there oh. really are. Oh. I will so bulbous. That. This is a, an especially good rock spot. Oh, those tentacles are long. They are so cool. The Argus yes, is really cool. Is. If it wasn't for that tether in the middle. Mm -hmm. I know. Okay. <laughs> if it wasn't for that stupid other vehicle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> flashlight. Look at this. Look at this creature. Can you give me a little zoom? Excellent. This is so cool. Oh, buddy, what a show. Mm. Oh, nice. That Argus shot is great. It oh, really, yeah. really is. is. The Herc view is not bad either for looking at this texture of the rocks. Oh, <laughs> oh. This is nice. Always the texture of the rocks. <laughs> Oh yeah, it is a stocked sponge. Yeah, oh, that's oh, what yeah. I saw before. <laughs> so wow. cute. Okay. We shall we? We shall. Okay, go ahead. We're all caught up with the ship, so we can cool. do what we want. Um, let's make it a short step because we have. It looks like it gets really steep, um, like in the in how it falls off. 20 meters sounds great. What's that? Okay. Zero six zero, Roger. Oh, zero six five. Yeah, he just made a heading change, not a Raj. It wasn't like a stab maneuver. <laughs> Can we be the stab watch? <laughs> oh no, well, I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, we, I don't know about that. The energy I think was like imposed on us from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, going for. Yeah, I guess that is not the energy of our of our. No, we're the Zenos. How do you spell it with a Z or a X? X, X E N O Phi like Four. That, what what is a Zeno? Zeno Phi Zeno Phio Four. Zeno Phi Twelve to Four. But what are we call? What is that? The those little white things in the sediment that we keep seeing that we thought were bones a long oh, time ago. Oh, okay, those guys. Those are actually forams, or like they were they were in the sponge family briefly and then they got moved out. They're like protists. That's very us. <laughs> 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 is this a or is this a tunicate? I'm going to go, go with Holothorian. 
just hanging out under here. They're kind of everywhere, but they can't be ignored and a because brittle star. they're so and another cute. Another brittle star. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Look at nice. It, okay, go ahead. Great if texture. a ghost was gonna look like anything, it'd look like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it would look like a deep staria too. Oh, that's a very ghostly creature. How? You step off into the abyss. Mm. Steve says that Xenos, you can imagine an amoeba with a sediment house. Right, so they're single-celled, right? Yeah, they're single-celled. They're, they're yeah, they're four ams. They're four ams. But they make their their shell out of the minerals in the sediment. So if you say deep staria, is that the same as a, like if it ha ha follows with another name? Like a deep staria enigmatica? Is that the same as, is like, oh, just, I think was that all one yeah, thing? Yeah, I think that I mean that creature. Are there deep staria something else's? Like I cousins? I do not know the answer to that. Raj. Nor I. Deep staria, I believe, came from the name of the... the deep staria six? Sorry. Bad joke. <laughs> I think from from the name of the ship or the vehicle or some whatever was imaging it was called the Deep Star. Oh. And it was a mystery, so then they just called it Deep Star Enigmatica. <laughs> so yeah, that checks out. Okay. This is gonna be a little weird because we're going down pretty steep stuff. I'll see what I can do to get some good views. Someone in the chat would like to know, how do brittle stars sense corals and sponges for food? Is it a chemical sense? Ooh, good question. I think some of them also are like filter, or that's not right. <laughs> Amber's not very excited about these rocks. Yes. <laughs> are they angular? No, 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 no. These aren't rocks for collecting. Most of them are very, very in situ. You wouldn't be able to get them. A few of them you might be able to, but they'll be too big. But um, Just these are, are nice sort of pillowy kind of textures. What can you learn about these rocks if you can't collect them? Like what, are you, what are you looking for? Are you on SBL, Gabby? I am. I'm sorry, my mic was too far from my mouth. Ah, mom. okay. What can you learn about these rocks just by looking at them? So I can learn the morphology of the flows just by having, just by looking at these videos and the still footage. So get a sense of the flow textures, what the landscape actually looks like as opposed to just looking at a bathymetric map and having the contours tell me that, oh, there might be a cone over there versus um. us going to it and saying, no, it might actually be more so over here and we have these pillow basalts that had the outer rim cool very quickly um, and be more glassy versus sheet flows. Every, lots of uh, physical volcanology Roger. sort of things. Bridge, huh? So it's still very exciting, even when I do not collect rocks. Does morphology mean like um, shape? How do we step to zero meters bearing zero six five? Does morphology mean how something was shaped or, or how it is changing? Uh, it's kind of like just how it looks generally. So like even I look at morphology. Yeah. So I'm looking at how these what these corals look like and what are like distinguishing features. Okay. Yeah. Do we you have we to looked it up just to make sure, but it's the study basically of the yeah. form. So yeah, of the look. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get better. And and that can be on many different scales. So I, I mean, at least for geology, we can look at the morphology of tiny little shards to the overall morphology of the flows that we're seeing. To entire sea mounds. Yeah, to, um, yeah, exactly. To the whole regional morphology. Okay, thank you. And um, there are two species in the deep staria genus that have been identified thus far. Oh, cool, two species. So yep. there's, there's the enigmatica yeah. and the reticulum. Cool. Reticulum. Enigmatica was the first one identified in 67 and reticulum in 88. It's like another type of chrysogorgian. Ooh, yeah. and, it and it has a, a little shrimp. Is that a shrimp? Is or a squat lobster. lobster. Translucent one. Beautiful, vibrant colors. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. And Steve says, ROVs usually get a lot of species named after them, so Victor Gorgia, 
It's named after the Victor 6000 I Fremier vehicle. A from, yeah. Is there a Hercule Gloria? That's a French. He French says one. that yeah. he doesn't know if there are any yet, so. Interesting. I like Deep Star, Deep Star 4000, I think, is what the vehicle is called. That's a good name. Yeah, Deep Star 4000. Is it easier to um, get corals named than seat mounts? Ooh, oh. that's a good oh, question. I, that's a very good go question. With, yes, because it's kind of based on publications rather than getting as opposed there's to there's no council. There is, well, in a sense of reviewers and advisors and everything. <laughs> yes, but, but isn't there a huge process to get conf like or to get it kind of approved that it is a new species and I then naming so, yeah. it? So there maybe like maybe a, that's the process. There is a process, but I think it getting published makes it a little more official. This looks so nice. There might be another Chrysogorgia down there. Yeah. Into the blue we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Um, so I usually use these buttons. Um, And if you want to do a little pressing of those buttons, go for it. Um, you have to select your head first, so you're not doing it to just some random one. Um, yeah, oh so select God. your head, it's going to get outlined. And then uh, that's the one you're making adjustments to, and you can make the sector like point different ways and be narrower or wider, or things like that. You can make it go faster. Gabby, can you let the audience know um, what you and Kylie are working yeah. out over there? So each of the vehicles has a sonar on it that spins 360 degrees around. Excuse me, Ryan, can you put the mezzo on the um, satellite? And yeah, um, the sonar. It's a yeah, computer. sonar PC. Yeah, the sonar PC. um So it gives us a, a 360 degree view around each of the vehicles. And it's super helpful for na navigating like complex terrain. Mm -hmm. It's especially helpful underwater because we can't often see that far away. Um, and so the sonar allows us to, the sound travels a lot, um, a lot further underwater. Uh, and it bounces off of rocks really well and comes back to us. And we can tell how long it takes for that, the sound we put out to come back to us. And it lets us know where there are obstacles and the shape of the terrain, and it can help a lot. Like if you were if you were listening to like the conversation last night about um, spatial disorientation, is that what we were calling it? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that's right. Um, yeah. Oftentimes, when I get disoriented, the um, the the missing piece, the piece that puts it all back together to me for me, is the sonar because it gives you the actual shape without any of like sort of the confounding issues that. Um, eyeballs have like how they interpret shadows and things like that and how we try and make three dimensions out of a flat image using texture um, Structure from motion shape from shading and a bunch of other tricks that our brains use and sonar just doesn't have that issue It just tells you the shape of the world wow. um, And it can tell it to you even when the world is kind of far away and so you can make plans about your 
where you're going to move the vehicles um, and how not to run into things with them. Mm -hmm. um, and there's various ways to tune it. And so Kylie and I were just looking at one of the controls for the two sonars and how to tune it um, properly for what we're trying to do. Awesome explanation. Thank uh, you. Right now, Argus has a hundred meter. It's looking a hundred meters out, and Herc is looking fifty meters. Right. That sounds right. Um, and yeah. let's let this next move settle out. Roger. I mean, um, the Argus swing. The layback. Yeah, that. The words. Yes, yes. I just That's those. why there's two of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just fill in the blanks. Van Mad Libs. <laughs> <laughs> what, were, what was the Mad Libs thing so from last funny. night? I was having a conversation with myself about how I have anxiety. <laughs> Leaving the and oven on. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was talking with you, but I wasn't on SPL <laughs> because I'm evil. Oh, 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 no, you're not. <laughs> when everything gets taken care of for you on the ship, it, it's a transition. <laughs> These anemones, Gandalf and enemy is these are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's official. <laughs> oh boy, the Gandalf and enemies. <laughs> The lasers that are on Hercules are 10 centimeters apart. That's right. Thank you for tuning in, Australia. Nia, this question um, was asked a few nights ago about uh, the sonar affecting animals. Was yeah. that you? Can you kind of give them a, um, a recap about that? Sponge yeah, I definitely can. Yeah. Um, so the sonars that we have on board uh, are not a low enough frequency. There's to also something else in your bubble cam. Really um, do any damage to marine mammals. Uh, that's generally like, like seismic sonar where you're like actually making explosions in the water and, and then looking deep, deep beneath the seafloor. Uh, that can be potentially harmful, uh, but we don't do that on Nautilus. We just do multi-beam mapping and uh, sub-bottom mapping. And then the vehicles have these sonars as well. Um, and they, marine mammals that echolocate, that use sonars of their own can hear what we're doing, but it doesn't seem to have Aww. a huge effect on them. Like dolphins, for example, will come and surf the bow wake while we're mapping. Um, and, you know, they, they seem to be having a, a great time. Uh, we do have marine mammal protocols. So if we see marine mammals within a certain distance of the ship, then we will secure our sonars. Um, and then when we first turn them on, we ramp them up in power slowly so that we don't startle anything that's nearby with like really loud sound all at once. Uh, and Megan, the other day when we talked about this, Megan uh, was, was sharing the oversight. So there are laws uh, about marine mammals and how to protect them uh, regarding sonar. Uh, and a lot of like in industry jobs, they'll have a marine mammal observer on board uh, we don't have that. We just have someone on the bridge that calls us if, if they see anything. The fisheries and wildlife. Observer? Jordan. Uh, I wouldn't different. consider... You, so when I say marine mammal observer, it's like BOEM hires people who come out and stand watches just either on the bridge or outside of the ship, like only looking for marine mammals. Okay. Yeah, I've... I've when we did seismic surveys in the Southern Ocean, we would have, there was always somebody on the bridge. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they, they take that pretty seriously. Um, I, I, you know, I think Jordan would be akin to that on this expedition, but uh, not necessarily like explicitly filling that role. Like he's not up on the bridge doing watches like with binoculars, right. as far right. as I know. No, I don't think so. Um, but yeah, there's a few. The Endangered Species Act uh, has some simulations around it. And then Megan had a few other ones. Do you remember what they were, Megan? I'd have to so look those up. In. But there's, yeah, there's like an EPA thing, Endangered Species Act. There's there's so maybe like three or four of them. Yeah. I thought that was a plex. 
It is something that's like still being uh, oh, uh, now I'm looking at studied. Those, we'll do look at very zoanthony. But from our experiences mapping and because the like there's two different using, types of polyps there, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah it could, it's not harmful to being still taken over marine animals that we are seeing. If you're interested, check out the docets.org website. Okay, There's lots of resources. -S. Paragorgia, Coraliotes, with yes, yep, then the, the yellow, yellow is zoanthids. zoanthids. So it was a Paragorgia underneath the zoanthids? Yes. Okay. And then Steve also has an update on that other very interesting coral that had the dark red object on it. That was an anthemastus being preyed on by a carnivorous jellyfish. Okay, so it was it. Huh. 